up, guys? Welcome to Season 5, Episode 10 of the Monday Night Wars. I am Chad Talks, and joining me, as always, is... J-Mac Gaming. Hola! Welcome, Chad, to the 5th Annual... I think it's 5th Annual. Could be longer. 5th Annual Judgment Day. We are live here at the Spirit Center in Kansas City, Missouri, one of the biggest nights of Kansas City's career. Uh, <laughs> the biggest night of Kansas City's career. The city gets a career now, brother? We haven't been here in a while. Listen, a whole ass city. That's a whole that's a tough career. Last time we were here at the Spirit Center, it was 1999. Owen Hart, The Rock, Owen Hart won the world championship, and we are now back four or five years later to uh, for Judgment Day 2003. You can look at the card over here. It is headlined tonight by the world champion Jeff Jarrett against Ric Flair, the man that won it at uh, SummerSlam and then lost it the night after to Jeff Jarrett in the Money in the Bank cash-in. We, let's go over the let's go over Judgment Day. See what Judgment Day is all about, Chad. We go to 1999. That sounds like the name of a, like the name of a good wrestling stable. Uh, I think that that stable would never get over. That stable would never get over. They would need Edge in it, I think. <laughs> uh, we start off 1999 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at the Spectrum. Roadkill opened the show, uh, defeating Mosh number two. Uh, we opened with Paul White D'Lo, Chushin over <laughs> A Steel. Uh, the Assmen over the Legion of Doom of Kip James. What? The Assmen. Was Kip James and Blackman. All right, yep. <laughs> we were in a dark time here. Triple H, Kurt Angle, uh, a rivalry that always they love each other. Christian Cage over Ken Shamrock, Booker T over Steve Austin, and Eddie Guerrero defending the world title in a fit of war way over Owen Hart, Sean Stasiak, and The Rock. The year after, Chad, The Undertaker opening the show beating Steve Blackman. What the fuck was that? Ass man. What? Yes, man. What was that? I'm gonna have to go back. I do not remember that. That as I'm gonna have to look into that. I have my notebook somewhere from 2000. Uh, Randy Orton over at King I K Jamie Noble over Ric Flair. Oh God. Kid Cash over Farouk and the Godfather. Rhino over Savage. Takamichi Noku over Mark Henry and Jeff Jarrett. That makes me remind myself to get my notes in front of me. Thank God I just remembered that. It would have been a bad night. Uh, Paul White's rats. Uh, Paul White and fucking the Rat Boys uh, for Triple H, Sean, Triple H, uh, Sean Michaels, and Brian Danielson. Wow. Brock Lesnar wow. over Liger, Edge over Booker T, and Christian Cage over Angle, Austin, and Kane. So Kurt Angle wrestled twice? Oh, no, Kurt Angle's not even in that match. Uh, Judgment Day 2001. Uh, Chad Collier over Lenny Lane, RP Lenny Lane. The Bashams over the Double J Record Boys of Jacobs and Kazarian. Danielson over Malenko. Um, we got Edge and Christian over Liger and Muto, the uh, Dynamo. Uh, PJ Black over The Rock to retain his belt. And to win the belt back from Kishi, Brock Lesnar was the last man standing. And last year, Chad, last year, we saw Randy Orton. Over Chris Jericho, the Randy Orton's coronation of being the self-proclaimed future of the WWE. We had Martin and Burton over rolling to Paris. Good for them. Lita uh, defeated Toshi Umatsu in a massive match. RIP Crowbar. Crowbar defeating Sean Devari, and I think in Crowbar's last pay-per-view match uh, before he tragically passed away. Booker T over Scott Steiner. I think they... Makes you shed a tear. Yeah, what? Which one? Booker T or Steiner or Crowbar? Crowbar. Oh, God. I thought he was like Booker T. Was Steiner losing made you shed a tear? Uh, China over Chad Collier. That may have shed a tear. Oh, that <laughs> makes me shed a tear. Edging Christian over the bash. I'm Sean Morley defeating Triple H and Dean Malenko to win the Intercontinental Championship. In the corrupt Black McMahon dynasty came to an end when Alex Wright defeated PJ Black to win the WWE Interim World Heavyweight Championship. Tonight, though, I thought I saw, I heard something in the kitchen. It may have, I don't know, I can't see. Tonight, it's Ric Flair, the, the, the legend, the nature boy, 
14-time world champion going for his 15th world ever world heavyweight championship over the CEO of Double J Records, Jeff. CEO! 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 I cannot call him that. I forgot that as a gimmick. I cannot call him that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Whatever. I'm rolling with it. And our co-main event of uh, the rising stars, Nagayo, Toyota. Mickey James is part of that. No, she's not. It's Cutie Suzuki. Mickey James is in a different group. They take on Queen's Court of Toshi Yamatsu and China in our co main event. But let's get into it, Chad. Let's get into it. We got a massive show. We start off with a few pre. Sh- oh, oh, sirens in the background. The Denver I is. Call the police. They heard Judgment Day uh, was going on. They said, we got to get there. That shit's fire. Oh, they took one picture of the card. That's so fucking cool. That's so funny. Whatever. I know the card. Money Inc., though, Chad. Mr. Wall Street and Kid Cash, they take on Fig and Valentino. And they get the win in the the opener in 1438. When Mr. Wall Street hits the flying lariat, he calls that the stock exchange and gets the win in 1438. Nice. Our next match, Angel Williams. The uh, part of Team FCW with Rebecca Knox and Mercedes Martinez. You'll see them in action later tonight. She defeats Mickey James in 715 with the I'm Prettier. Um, that's a hilarious name. I'm assuming that's probably an unprettier, and that's a great finishing name. Yes. I love that. She was actually <laughs> trained. She's uh, She was actually trained by uh, Christian Cage in 1996 through 1999. That makes sense. That's why she's using the unprettier. It's a, it's a throwback or homage or paying homage to her trainer, Christian Cage. And our other opening match, Spike and Ian McGregor. And 80, what the fuck's going on tonight? Great chemistry. Oh, I didn't see that. Yep. Uh, Ian McGregor got a 78, bro. Give the fucking world title to 1920s world superstar Ian McGregor. <laughs> he defeats Spike with the Boston Crab. CEO. CEO. Because was, we... That's ti- that's timeless Ian McGregor. He, he, he's, been, he's been Tony Storm's gimmick before Tony Storm did it. <laughs> timeless Ian McGregor. This is the... <laughs> Fucking the hype package, <laughs> the pro- fuck off. The promo, the hype package, the whole shablang for Judgment Day 2003, headlined by Ric Flair and Jeff Jarrett, former, I wouldn't even say former friends, but they go way back, Chad. They go way back. Ric Flair and Jeff Jarrett were in, was Jeff Jarrett ever in WCW in real life? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, in real life, definitely. Well, pre in this, our save no, uh, pre, yeah, because he was always pre, WW. Because he left, he I don't know, I don't know if pre WCW he was ever here, but I know in like I know in like the late nineties and two thousand and early two thousands he was definitely there. Yeah, so but maybe maybe they there. have maybe they have less uh f- less friendship than I thought they did, but it, I'm gonna play it off as they have they go way back, and uh, Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett turned his back on Ric Flair, hitting him with the guitar during the title celebration uh, uh, last month in September on Monday Night Raw. Ric Flair's big title coronation, 14-time world champion, and held it for a day when Jeff Jarrett cashed in the King of the Mountain. The first time he ever won his own match, cashed it in to win the money or the World Heavyweight Championship. We also see Rene Dupree and Satoshi Kojima, a battle of strength and a battle of two guys that have been scratching and clawing and want to make um they want to make their way up to the World Championship, guys, uh, Chad. Two guys, Kojima coming off a big win over Don Fry a few months ago. And Rene Dupree 3 weeks ago said that's Anybody, the French tickler can do that. And he beat Don Fry in a one-on-one match on Raw. And that has led to these guys beating the hell out of each other the last few months. And then Teddy Hart and Chavo Guerrero. You didn't see it on the match card over there because I wanted to keep it a secret. These guys, it's a blood feud. And it's not only, as Chavo Guerrero said it on Raw a few weeks ago, this is not about the title. This is not about, this is about family. You disrespected the Guerrero name. I'm going to make you pay for it. Wrestling has more than one royal family. No. And, you know, you talk about some of those great families. It's the Hearts. It's the Guerreros. There's many others. But 
I'm mean, looking forward to see this one. A blood uh, feud. Are you ready for a world title match tonight where on AEW where it features a Rhodes taking on a, a Samoan named Joe? Where have we <laughs> where, so ready. Where have we seen that before? Oh, I and, and we're gonna and CM Punk is gonna be there. What a f- what a fucking Mark Tony Khan is. Let's start the show off with Hassan and Davari coming out. Chad, they are they are spewing anti-American. They're saying, look at all these fat, lazy, slobby St. Louis marks. Chad, they're saying, look, all you guys do is sit around, watch NASCAR, drink beer, and get fat. Not us. Not Muhammad Hassan, not Sean Davari, the what is the standard for male peak masculinity? Muhammad Hassan and Sean Davari, and then out and then said, "You can never catch us with a beer. You can never catch us with a cheeseburger. You can never catch us can, listening to country tell, music." You can tell there's St. Louis Rams fans here because all you people do is ram food down your throats. Oh shit! <laughs> when this when this city eventually loses their football team. Oh, no, no, no. Kurt, Kurt Warner, the quarterback's front row. He's flipping them off. And then, Chad, we hear a song we haven't heard since maybe 1994, 1995. I am a real American. Fight for the <laughs> rights of every man. Two guys. It's the Burger King. It's Burger King coming out with cheeseburgers for the crowd, bearing USA, USA, USA. American flags. John Burger and Lance Cade, the, the 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 definition of true Americans, right here, Chad. Definitely. They, they have come out. And the, T- Toby Keith is singing the song of Real American. I, was I know it's just gonna ask. I was just gonna ask: Is Toby Keith going to <laughs> come, come down to the ring with them? <laughs> they go over. They hug. They, they give Kurt Warner a big high five. Ba 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 ba. And they these guys. It's a tag team match. It's Hassan and Davari taking on Burger Cade, Lance Cade, and John Burger. Chad, who do you got in this match? I got the Burger King, USA, USA, <laughs> USA. Chad, well, the finish in this match, the finish in this match is when the referee come out, Chad. The referee, and t- oh shit, yeah, the referee gets attacked or like they, uh, Hassan Irish whips Lance Cade into the corner. And the referee is just in the way. The referee gets clobbered by Lance Cade. Damn, ref. Look out, ref. Look Come out, on. referee. And then Davari is stalking John Berger on the outside, Trav, right in the right in the, right by the barricade. And you know who punches Sean Davari? Kurt Warner. Yeah! Kurt Warner, the quarterback, he jumps the barricade and gives a big boot to Sean Davari. And then John Berger throws him back into the ring. Lance K seizes. He's looking at him. He's like, holy shit. He's done, he points at Kurt Warner. He does the Hulk Hogan. You! And he bounces off the rope. He goes for the big leg drop. And Sean DeVore, or yeah, Sean DeVore moves out of the way. Hassan comes in, hits a big clothesline. And uh, that's the finish, Chad, as Muhammad Hassan and Sean DeVore beat Burger Cade in 1455, even with the Kurt Warner uh Interference. This is the worst day in American history. America boy. is booing. Everyone in the crowd is booing. Boo! As Hassan and Davari keep, they keep booting the boots down on John Berger and Lance Cade. And Chad, who comes and saves the day? Toby Keith. Sergeant Slaughter. Sergeant Slaughter! <laughs> Slaughter comes out and puts Sean Devari in a chokehold, and that's and America wins at the end of the day. As they oh, all stand tall. You. <laughs> USA! 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 We see backstage Ric Flair warming up. He's going for world title. This was supposed to say 15, 15 tonight. I, Woo! That crowd is the crowd is hot here in St. Louis, brother. 
The crowd is hot. They got that red, white, and blue blood just surging through. And now we move on, though. We have that uh, that two uh, two on two match: Lita and Tori Wilson taking on Team FCW, uh, the developmental program in which WWE sends their developmental workers to. Rebecca Knox and Mercedes Martinez. This all started and stemmed from Lita and Tori Wilson going backstage to Vince McMahon the new general manager after Mick Foley just left last month and said, look, there, I mean, it's true. We're, we're tired of waiting around. Look, uh, Tori, she's a, she was cool in WCW. I'm a former women's champion. We're just sitting around. And then Vince says, look, I, there were a couple other girls that were gave me an email saying they wanted, they wanted to go to, and they were sick of waiting around. So how about, and then he books a match, Jen. I don't want to get too much in the program. I'm trying to keep it steamlined a little bit, uh, which in turn led to a Rebecca Knox upsetting Tori Wilson in the middle of the ring, which uh, yeah. kind of infuriated uh, Tori Wilson, which was uh, egged on by these three women, Angel, Mercedes, and Rebecca, kind of mocking them, saying, look, you, you, you lost to us. <laughs> I know we're good, but <laughs> Jesus, Tori Wilson. <laughs> we suck. <laughs> She said, if we suck, you must be the worst. Tori, you came in second in the WWE Women's Invitational. You know, you won, and you guys lost to us. And Lita slapped Mercedes Martinez, which pissed them off, which has led to this match here tonight. Lita and Tori Wilson trying to get their trying to get their name back against Mercedes Martinez and Rebecca Knox, Team FCW. We already saw Angel Williams beat Mickey James earlier tonight. Can they continue the momentum of the young um, underdogs? Or will the, the OGs, the veterans of the women's division, Lita and Tori Wilson, will they win? Chad. Justin, if you would have asked me which one between Lita and Tori was going to have a really good promo and who was going to have a really bad promo, I would not have predicted right. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't realize you had the expert pipe bomb as Tori Wilson on your roster. Oh, of course. Oh, masterful oh, job know. improvising with I didn't, the crowd. I didn't know where you were going with that. I'm like, I don't think either one of them really cut a promo during that. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Tori Wilson, a masterful mic guy. Uh yeah. Who do you got? <laughs> um, I'm going to go with uh, Knox and Mer uh, Mercedes Martinez. Well, Chad, the inexperience of Knox and Martinez uh, was detrimental to the to the to those women, but not not all not all the way through the match. As Re Mercedes Martinez and Rebecca Knox pin, uh, they get the win over Lita and Tori Wilson in 16:01 when Rebecca Knox. Pinned Tori Wilson. These oh look, okay, look, Tori Wilson stinks. She got a twenty-seven. She's not good. All right, let's let's. <laughs> God damn, can she talk? God damn, she. Needs, <laughs> Lita got a sixty-nine and lost to fucking Rebecca Knox and Martinez. Just, it's a big win for Martinez and Knox here. All right, all right. The two heels have won the two matches tonight. Not, but we at least we got America. You know, America has America. as America has kind of. Even doubt the the heels winning every match, but Terry Taylor, yeah, I know. Tori Wilson needs to be booked a little. She needs more. Yeah, she. Uh, Chad, spoiler alert: she can't go, brother. She can't. She can't. Uh, backstage, Alex Wright welcomes his co his coworker <laughs> Jerry, Seinfeld. Jerry Seinfeld to Judgment Day. He said, "Jerry, it's been a while since I've seen you on set. I, I think we got another big announcement, Jerry." And Jerry says, "Hold up, let's Alex Wright, what's up, man? What's up with that? What's up with that? Let's go, hey, Tori Wilson, what's up with her? Jerry, stop being a little pervert, brother. Come on now, brother. She just lost." And he's like, no, what's up with that? And Jerry Seinfeld just walks away. And Alex was like, all right, I got to go corral Jerry Seinfeld tonight. We move on, though, Chad. We have a match that you're not going to like. No one's oh, going to like. like. They're going like to love. They're going to love, Chad. Oh, They're going to oh. love. Shannon, Shannon Moore taking on Machine Gun Chris Sabin, Chad. Now... Yeah, they're part. He's now part of a group called the Motor City Machine Guns with him and Rhino, yes. two Michigan born men. 
So I, <laughs> I, that's the tribal chief rhino. That's you. the tribal chief <laughs> rhino and machine gun Chris Saban to a Michigan, Michigan's finest uh, products or exports in the wrestling business. But not. Where's Alex Shelley at? Is he not in the game yet? He's in your developmental, just sitting there waiting for his opportunity to strike. I think he's in this. I think he's in yours. He might not be. Is I, he? I think he. I think he is because I think. I think when we when you let me borrow Chris Sabin for the Cruiserweight Classic, I think I was trying to get you to let me have him <laughs> for that very reason. Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot you were trying to scam. You were trying. I was to like, scam. hey, I'll make a trade. Give. Because I wanted the Motor City Machine Guns. <laughs> you were trying to scam me. This match was supposed to happen last month. Uh, Shannon Moore has not been. Uh, he took. He didn't take kindly uh, to Chris Saban and Rhino's uh, mocking of John Cena losing his world title shot, losing at SummerSlam. He was not happy about that, and he took. Uh, he stood up for his friend, Jen. He stood up for his friend, and this match was supposed to happen last month, but Chris Saban suffered an, an injury on a house show, which has uh, postponed this match until tonight here at Judgment Day, and we saw last last Monday Night Raw Rhino putting John Cena through a table, Chad, and Chris Saban putting Shannon Moore through the announce table. They got the, they got the legs up on, this, on these guys, but tonight they go one on one. A match that was months in the build comes to an end tonight. It's Chris Saban and it's Shannon Moore, former former number one contender. Remember, Shannon Moore lost to Brock Lesnar. He took him all the way to the limit. Shannon Moore did. Remember that. Uh, former WCW World Champion pinning Shawn Michaels. Um, yeah. New people have can, have can say that they've pinned. John Michaels and WCW. And Shannon Moore. Shannon Moore actually, I mean, you know, Shannon Moore uh, in the last couple of weeks does have a win over Rhino in one-on-one -on -one action uh, and tag team action. Uh, Cena and Moore defeated Rhino and Saban a couple of weeks on Monday Night Raw. But uh, two weeks ago, Shannon Moore was going one-on-one -on -one with Fig and Chris Saban came out, attacked Shannon Moore. Um, and Rhino attacked uh, Shannon Moore as well over the last couple of weeks. And remember the table spots. So we have this match now. Chris Saban coming out the machine gun. Rhino still uh, is not medically cleared to be here tonight, Chad. Uh, he's still yeah. suffering an injury. And then uh, John Cena and Shannon Moore. Shannon Moore coming out. John Cena walks into the ramp with him and then leaves. So it is Shannon Moore and, John, or Shannon Moore and Chris Saban out tonight, Chad. Who do you have in this match? Is Melina Perez out there with them? Oh, I forgot to take Melina Perez off of Shannon Moore. Yes, but Melina Perez is with them. <laughs> nice. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, well, then, for that reason alone, I'm going to say Shannon Moore walks away victorious. Shannon Moore walks away victorious. Chad, Chris Sabin, in an unbelievable match, hits the future shock. Shout out Randy Orton and pins <laughs> Shannon Moore in 2601. A massive win. For Chris Saban here tonight, Chad. A massive win. Huge win for the machine gun. A machine gun Chris Saban. Is that the win he needed to be like, oh shit, this guy's on the map, brother. This guy's on the map, Chris Saban. This is good. This could elevate this probably will elevate Chris Saban's career. You can't see Justin, but I have my hand up and my finger pointing. What does that mean? <laughs> to Detroit. To Detroit. We're in St. Louis. Yeah, but he's the Motor City Machine Gun. No, so he's, his fans he's, are. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. His fans are going wild. What fans? Because another heel won tonight. <laughs> help! A heel of a night. Help! 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 Chet, uh, uh, Jared Briscoe, uh, Pat Patterson, and and, and Stan Laner, and uh, they're calling for help. Uh, Teddy Hart is found backstage, knocked out. He's bleeding. Oh, he's no. bloodied. Um, Pat Patterson is not happy about this. We were supposed to get a Teddy Hart, Chavo Guerrero blood feud uh, send off tonight, but uh, Teddy Hart is is not good. He's not okay. Chavo Guerrero, that son of a bitch! Mr. McMahon, get that son of a bitch Chavo Guerrero in here right now. I uh, remember a couple weeks ago on, oh my God, I think I did it on Raw. If I'm not mistaken, last month, uh, Teddy Hart beat Eddie Guerrero on Monday Night Raw. Um, so this could have something to do with that. Could have something to do with Teddy Hart uh, and the Guerrero family kind of just 
going all out. Could go with Chavo Guerrero uh, cutting a shoot promo saying, fuck Brett, fuck Owen, fuck Stu, fuck Natalia, fuck Davy Boy, fuck Jim. He said, fuck the Hart family. Uh, could have something to do with that. Um, Part of my language, but that is exactly what he said. By the way, um, we're yeah, gonna, yeah, you didn't you didn't mince words. Um, I I'll keep it keep it straight with you. You know, that's not ideal. You know, you can't have that. We got fined a lot of money by our TV providers when he said that. Uh, we'll <laughs> pull the curtain back. Uh, you can't have that. You can't have that. And you have something to do with that. But uh, he still goes on the rampage tonight and attacks Teddy Hart. But now we go into a match which has world title ramifications, Chad. It's not per se a number one contenders match, but this could bump either one of these guys, the winner, into that ca- that category, that conversation. It's Rene Dupree and the Satoshi Kojima. Back in April, Chad, Kojima got drafted to Monday Night Raw, and he said the first thing he wanted to do was make a name for himself. He didn't want to be the side piece. He was still a final boss, but he wasn't, you know, he wasn't the first boss he saw going into the final boss. So he was the heir to the throne of the final boss. He said this is he's not a tag team guy now, he's a singles guy. And for the few months he 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 you know, he made you believe that going into matches. With a John Cena, he beat uh, he beat Don Fry on pay per view. A guy like Don Fry, a big MMA guy who beat the Undertaker once. Uh, that's not a that's not a, a win you take lightly. That's a massive win for Satoshi Kojima. And in comes a guy you could probably say is on the same page as Satoshi Kojima. A guy who was always linked to fellow members of a stable or a group. When he was in La Resistance, Rene Dupree took the the draft as an opportunity to become a single superstar, a main event talent. And he was just never he was never around. It seemed like the raw GM, Vince McMahon or Mick Foley, just never never saw that in him. They never saw that potential Rene Dupree had in him. So he took it into his own hands. As he uh, he attacked Don Fry and he beat Don Fry and he said, "Hey Kojima, it's not that hard, buddy. I don't want to hear you go around walking around backstage bragging about how you beat Don Fry anymore because I just did it. I'm the French tickler, Rene Dupree, the French phenom. He calls himself Chad, oh Rene Dupree, and uh, that has led to this match where these guys have just kind of gone back and forth week by week trying to one up each other, and it led to them just." Beating the shit out of each other the last couple of weeks, Chad. They, you know, yes. went back and forth, uh, taking on guys. They would try to who could beat the other guy faster. And now it has led to a physical brawl, which led to security being called on Monday Night Raw. Kojima, Rene Dupree, who do you have, Chad? Um, I'm gonna go with the bad guy, Rene Dupree. Oh shit, Chad! Chad goes with the bad guy and. On cue, with a surprise roll-up cradle, Rene Dupree gets the job done in 2314. Wee wee! Ah, wee wee! It's the French tickle Wee wee! And the French phenom gets the job done. Rene Dupree beats Satoshi Kojima. In 2314, we go backstage now. Latin lover is with the awesome lovers, and he cuts a quick little promo. So Dylan Martin, Gabriel Burton. I respect you guys for getting back up after after we knock you down over and over again. But this is it. This is your last chance. You can't get your... Not everyone gets unlimited opportunities to Mike Awesome and Chris Benoit. This is not a buffet. This is a business. You get one more shot. If you don't win it, you're done. Get out of here. We'll see you later. And when we're done with Dylan Martin and Gabriel Burton, William Regal... When you put your hands on me two weeks ago, you made the biggest mistake of your life. We're coming for you. William Regal attacked Latin Lover a couple weeks ago, Chad. And um, he actually slapped Chris Benoit first. You know, he uh, it was a main event of Monday Night Raw. Benoit, Regal. Benoit beat Regal in the middle of the ring. Um, William Regal, not happy with it, slapped Benoit in the middle of the ring right after. No, it wasn't even like trying to handshake or whatever. We were going to go just slap them. 
He was he was livid. He was mad. He was mad. He was down. He was frustrated with himself, and that has uh, raised the alarms of Latin lover Mike Awesome and Chris Benoit. So, like Latin lover said, they're coming for William Regal next. But we go backstage. Oh, we don't go backstage. We go to the middle of the ring, Chad. It's time. It's the Legend Killer versus Blue Thunder. It's Chris Hero versus June Akiyama. How did we get here, Chad? Back in July. All the way back in July, Chad, Chris Hero, and even started before that, Chris Hero started beating up legends. It started with <laughs> Gerald Briscoe, Pat Patterson, you know, uh, Ricky Steamboat was knocked out backstage. Um, Chris Hero was just going down murderer's row of former WWF champions from the 80s. It was, it was disgusting. It was despicable. And he had that rolling elbow. He's got that elbow guard on him where he just roll. He does that 360 and just knocks him out with it. He's got a little, he got a protege, Orlando Jordan. Now, he has come uh, around the last few months. And Orlando Jordan is now doing the dirty work, attacking people from back, behind, blindsiding them. And they did that to Jun Akiyama a couple weeks, or a couple months ago, which led to Akiyama being out of action for a few months until. SummerSlam, where Chris Hero was uh, made aware of Akiyama's return. And Akiyama, the last few weeks, last month and a half, has uh, been teasing his return against Chris Hero until two weeks ago when Chris Hero defeated El Hijo Del Santo and Juni Akiyama came back and attacked Chris Hero. He says, you don't get away with you can't murder all the legends because I will not die. I'm Blue Thunder Jun Akiyama, and it's Chris Hero, the legend killer, Chad. A massive match here. A massive match. Who do you have, Chad? Chris Hero. Oh, my God. Did another bad guy win? You're (laughs) right. (laughs) He hits the hero's welcome after Orlando Jordan distracted Jun Akiyama. Um, Children are crying. Children. America cannot be saved anymore, as all the bad guys have won How much more can America take? (laughs) Chris Hero defeating Jun Akiyama in 22-49 with the interference from Orlando Jordan. After the match, Chad... Oh, man. Chris Hero with a down Junakiyama keeps telling Jordan to keep hitting. Keep hitting Junakiyama. And Orlando Jordan the first time kind of hesitates a little bit. He's like, boss, he's down. He's he's done. He's done for. And Hero's like, do it. And Orlando Jordan looks at him, looks back at Junakiyama, and just hits another elbow. It's like the Ilya Dragunov, like, flying, whatever they call the H-bomb. Just keeps hitting a f- elbow forearm on Akiyama until referee and security have to get him out of there. They have killed Junakiyama, Chad. Damn. They, the, the fans have, they need more Sergeant Slaughter because the fans are now throwing trash into the ring. This is getting, this is getting out of hand. We need a good guy to win. We need something good to happen, Chad. And I think I got it for you right here. I think I got it for you. Okay. Because I hope so. three days ago, a new WWE game came out, Chad. WWE nice. SmackDown, Here Comes the Pain. And we see a... I've been playing it nonstop. Exactly. The, uh, <laughs> Wall Street and Kid Cash, the hometown heroes, and everyone's favorite luchador, La Parca, are all backstage playing Here Comes the Pain. Wow! Nice. nice. You so can, they play as themselves. You can. They're playing them. They're playing with themselves, Chad. Has Mr. Wall Street been in your company long enough to be? He in didn't the game? make. He didn't make it. I actually only kid, only kid Cash in the Park only made the cut. To be honest I, with you, I watched I watched Bray Wyatt's documentary last night, and then I said to myself, "I should go see if I can sign Mr. Wall Street." And then literally, I show up, and he's on your pay per view. He's been. Said, he's, Never mind. He's been here. For, <laughs> he's been here for months, brother. Nice. I said, must. Must have forgot or didn't know. Uh, yeah, he's a, I don't think he. Yeah, I don't think he's ever had a main card match yet. So he's just. I was gonna to, say this is the, this is one of the things is we don't unless they are show make their pay per view debut we won't see them. Yeah. Um. La Barca also doing stuff, but we now move on, Chad, to a match for the tag team titles. It's Dylan Martin nice. and Gabriel Barton. The story we've gone over the story so many times. Of Dylan Martin and Gabriel Barton, the ultimate underdogs. You know, they were with Edge and Christian. They finally came back. They won the tag team titles. And then three months later, 
the ultimate baddies, Chris Benoit, Mike Awesome, the Awesome Killers, or the Awesome Lovers, whatever you want to say. They came in, they won the tag team titles, they said, fuck your Cinderella story. This this is not, <laughs> this business is not for babies, brother. It's not for feel-good moments. This is for wrestling and Chris Benoit, Mike Awesome. They have made that a statement through their title reign, but now they go one on, they go, they get the, uh, be a, uh, Jesus Christ, sorry, I had a stroke. I flipped through like six pages of my notebooks and I saw like four different things and I tried to read them all at once. <laughs> um, yeah, Dylan Martin, Gabriel Burton, they get their rematch tonight. This is a rivalry that, you know, Latin Lover went over again. He said, like, this is your last shot, guys. This is not handout central. This is not, we're not trying to make anyone feel good. This is it. You win it or you don't. And if you don't, See ya. See ya. See ya. Bye-bye. See ya. We got bigger and better things to do, Chad. Can Dylan Martin and Gabriel Burton, can they get the titles back? Or Mike Awesome and Chris Benoit just too dominant of a tag team to let go of these titles this early? Ta Chad, tag team action. Who do you got? I'm going to go with the Awesome Lovers. Chad, and on a roll. Yeah. The bad guys have Break won again. Me. This was a no DQ match, and the referee had to stop this match because Mike Awesome hit a power bomb on Dylan Martin. Chad, he hit a power bomb on Dylan Martin, and Gabriel Burton is on the outside just trying to crawl back in, trying to crawl. And Mike Awesome's yelling at him. He's like, "You, you better stop! Like you, you got to stop this. I'm gonna power bomb him again. Stop it! Don't you move!" And then Burton tried to get up again, and <laughs> Mike Awesome. Picked up Dylan Martin, powerbombed him again, and, and and Gabriel Burton just wincing in pain for his friend who's just getting his ass kicked at this moment. But Burton has no energy in him. He's got nothing left in him. Ben Wall's just beating the shit out of him outside, too. And he's like, don't do it. He's trying to get up again. And then and Mike Awesome hits one more powerbomb at Dale Martin, and the referee comes over, and he throws up the X. He stops the match, and that is that is your match. Mike Awesome and Chris Benoit is your are still your tag team champions. Mike Awesome in ninety two is is the greatest redemption story of all time. Yep. <laughs> Good for him. Good for Mike Awesome getting a ninety two. We found his niche. Um and we gotta get security out of here because this is this is we gotta not security. We gotta get the ambulance out of here because they they have to ambulance Dylan Martin away because he is still unconscious. Five minutes later, we are not a, we are not sure about his status. Chad will give you a, a status on uh, Dylan Martin later tonight. Um, but I mean, really, who can stop these guys? Who's gonna be stopping these guys? It's not gonna be fucking Dylan Martin and Gabriel Burton anymore. See ya. Certainly not. See ya. Uh. Backstage, Alex Wright's looking around. He's like, oh, I wonder where the fuck Jerry Seinfeld got to. And he rounds the corner, and Sean Morley is choking out Alex or Jerry Seinfeld. And he's Alex was like, you son of a bitch. And they start brawling. These guys have had a, kind of a few the last few weeks. Sean Morley kind of just being... Uh, sick and tired of Alex Wright coming and going off to Hollywood. He's like, either you stay here in wrestling in the WWE, your home, your where your love is, where you grew up, where your dad grew up, or you didn't grow up in WWE, you grew up in wrestling. You know what I did? This is your blood. This is your life. But you keep running away. You keep tiptoeing. Is am I am I a wrestler or am I an actor? Am I a wrestler or am I an actor? Pick one, Alex. Right? This isn't. Can I? I can't. Can I do both? No. This is not W. This is WWE. This is not Hollywood. This is not LA. This is WWE. And Alex was like, I can do both. And Sean Morley uh, punched him. He said, like, No. This is my company. I'm a goddamn wrestler. Sorry. Pardon my language. Sorry for cussing. And uh, yeah, this feud is going going on. And now we see Sean Morley choking out Jerry Seinfeld, Chad. What the hell? Yeah, they what's start. up with that? What's up with what's up with that? Chad Jeff Jarrett later tonight defends his world championship, his first ever one against the man he beat, the man he crossed for the world championship, Ric Flair. But we move on to our co-main event, Chad. Toyota. She made a return back in April. 
Chugusa Nagayo, your women's champion. She won the first ever women's Royal Rumble match, even with, with even with, no, not even with, with with her friends by her side. She had Sadamora, she had Toshi Yumatsu. She, she had her friends by her side, and then they turned their back as soon as she saw Nagayo get the title or get the Rumble, get some success. And then at SummerSlam, Chen, we had Nagayo and Yumatsu, a massive match, and then China appeared. The 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 eighth wonder, the ninth wonder of the world, the most dominant women's champion we have ever seen in WWE has made her return to the women's division. And she has sided with Yumatsu, sided with Queen's Court, and that has led to this tag team match, which a lot of the time has led to China and Toyota staring down. A match that we can only dream of seeing, Chad. Only 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 wish and manifest that that would happen in this save. But now we get this tag team match. Toyota and Nagayo, Rising Stars, taking on Queen Court of Tiyomatsu and China. Chad, it's your co-main event. All the bad guys have won. Will that run continue, or will finally a good person win? I'm going to say Minami Toyota and Shigusa Nagayo win. Chad, the bad girls. <laughs> this might be the first ever night where only bad people win. <laughs> Toshi Matsu and China get the job done. No one is going to beat China ever. Ever. China pins Toyota with a power bomb. That was supposed to be getting an 80. Uh, China off her game. All right. 82 with off her game. All right. I'll take it. We'll, we'll take it. I'll take him. I will take him. Backstage, Ric Flair. He's in Gorilla and he runs into Ric Flair or John Cena and Shannon Moore. John Cena and Ric Flair, they go back. They go way back. John Cena was his big dog, his, his side piece going into his Rumble win. Ric Flair likes to uh, thank John Cena for being that little push he needed to win the Royal Rumble and win that world championship. Shannon Moore's there, too. He's hanging out. John Cena says he, he wishes Ric Flair some luck, brother, as he goes one-on-one with Jeff Jarrett up next. Chad, this, the CEO of Double J Records, Jeff Jarrett, that son of a bitch, Turned his back on Ric Flair the night after Ric Flair won his 14th World Heavyweight Championship. The night after Ric Flair pinned the one of one, the prototype, the beast, unleashed Brock Lesnar in the middle of the ring. The third guy to ever beat him in one on one action. And he turned his back on his guy, Ric Flair. Even, even in the SummerSlam match. We saw Jeff Jarrett save the day and hit Brock Lesnar to let... I mean, Ric Flair won that match because of Jeff Jarrett. And then the night after, Jeff Jarrett turned on his back. It turned on his friend. The the backstabbing son of a bitch. This match is that rematch here. Ric Flair... He says, I'm, the, I'm the, the nature boy. Everybody knows me. I'm the biggest name that is, you'll ever step in the ring with, Jeff Jarrett. I'm a 14-time world champion, the greatest to ever do it, the dirtiest player in the game, the kiss-stealing, wheeling-dealing, son of a gun. Woo! And I'm coming to take that Woo! world championship and make you the, number, the name on the list of when I look back at my history and I look at the list of who guys I beat for the world title, I want to put your name right there, Jeff Jarrett, right there. And that'll be the only time any Nobody remembers me because I'm the household name. You're just a gimmick, Jeff Jarrett. And Jeff Jarrett on the go home says, I'm just a gimmick. I got an Oscar, Ric Flair. Or not an Oscar. He's got a Grammy. Remember, he won a Grammy Award, Jen, for his win. Yeah, right. song, song Dixie, Dixieland or whatever. <laughs> I'm the world champion. I have a match named... F- after me. I created a match here. I've been here since day one of this safe Ric Flair. They put a title. They called it the Jared title. No, they didn't. They called it the Stasiak title. What the fuck am I talking about? Ric Flair, you're old news. I'm the young 
up and comer. I am the future of this na- uh, future of this business. You say you're a household name. So is garbage, Ric Flair. That's a household name, and that gets stinky too when it gets old. All right, I am the future of this business. J E double F J A double R E double T. Jeff Jarrett, C E O D B J double J Records. That's the only name that's gonna. You're gonna know after this, after this match, Ric Flair. That's the only name. You're only gonna know the CEO, Jeff Jarrett, is gonna be the World Heavyweight Championship. I'm I'm pulling my pulling my cord of the WWE, and you can book that. Jeff Jarrett, Ric Flair is up next. Chad, who do you got? I got Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett, Chad, in an unbelievable match. The figure four leg lock. Jeff Jarrett. Oh my God, the disrespect. Ric Flair tapped out of his own move. Ric Flair tapped out to his own move, Chad. I can't. I had to edit his ma- I had to edit his move set to make this happen. Jeff Jarrett tapped out Ric Flair with his own move, and then he's now the one-time defending champion of the World Heavyweight Championship. Ric Flair. Tapping out to his own move. Jeff Jarrett grabs on the microphone. He says, I'm the real nature boy now. The CEO of the nature boy. Oh, it just rolls off the tongue. And then, Chad. Brock Lesnar's music hits, Chad. Brock Lesnar, the last few weeks, has gone after both of these men, Chad. Both of these men. Jeff Jarrett understands. He's a smart guy. Hears the music. Dumps out of the ring. And runs out of the arena with his world title. Brock Lesnar still comes down to the ring. He hates Ric Flair too because he feels like Ric Flair cost him the world title as well. He beat Ric Flair, beat Brock Lesnar. He gets in the ring. He picks up. He picks up Ric Flair to hit that five. And then John Cena comes out, Chad, and Shannon Moore comes out to save the day. America wins. America wins. John Cena and Shannon Moore and Ric Flair kind of stand tall over Brock Lesnar to end the night. Jeff Jarrett running away like a little coward bitch. And that is your judgment day, Jared. Jeff Jarrett, I mean, I didn't, okay, when I was booking this, I did not realize I was having all bad guys win. (laughs) That's just not what I had in mind. And then it just kind of happened as we were going through it. I'm like, oh, yeah, all the bad guys won tonight. (laughs) Get fucked, St. Louis is what is what I said. Um, this, will all, this will go down as one of the most evil nights in professional wrestling. Yeah, Jerry, Jim Ross is like, I hate the son of a bitch. I hate, I hate them all. Them rat bastard, Jeff Jarrett, that son of a bitch. Jonathan Coachman is like, what a great night. Michael Cole's like, I love Vince McMahon. <laughs> And then the, the 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 shot goes black, and we have the 2003 All Rights Reserved WWE, and then a fireplace and a big big red chair, Chad, a big red Santa chair. Claus. You know, you got that big red chair of someone at a desk with a fireplace, darkly lit room. You can't see who it is. Someone smoking a cigar. <sighs> He's smoking the cigar, and the phone rings. Ding-a-ling. He picks it up, Chad, and someone says, hey, something's crazy going down. We need you. He says, you got it, boss. And that, that is it. That is how we end the show, Chad. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? I don't know who it is. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Mr. Kenneth, Brent Michaels? <laughs> who is it? <laughs> that is. Who is it? Judge- who is it? Who's the mystery guy? <laughs> Judgment Day. Stone Cold. Stone Cold. <laughs> Bobby Lashley, that son of a bitch. <laughs> that is Judgment Day. Jeff Jarrett and all the bad guys win. A uh, night that's going to be uh, people are going to hate forever. Uh, if you were there for the crowd to see good guys win, you, you get piped. Um, and who was it, Chad? Who? Who, who is, is it? it? Who is it? Who is it? Something crazy is going down. We need you, Chad. Who is it? Who is it? 
what is going to be the outcome of this? What is going to be the ramifications of Jeff Jarrett running away? Do we finally get a Brock Lesnar, John Cena? I mean, we've already got beef between them. Brock Lesnar beat both Shannon Moore and John Cena over the last, in May and June for the world title. Or May, June and July, sorry. So we get a call back to that. The Royal Rumble's coming up soon. Mike Awesome and Chris Benoit can't be stopped. China is back and is looking as dominant as ever. And Sergeant Slaughter got the biggest pop of the night. We'll see you for Halloween Havoc. Trick or treat, smell my feet, give me something good to eat. Well, I will answer that request as we are here with Halloween Havoc 2003. Justin, are you ready to be spooked tonight? I am ready to be spooked. The 2003 edition of Halloween Havoc brought to you by Slim Jim and Snickers. And it is a, a very important night, Chad, because it is the end of of the WCW playoffs. This is the final night for the standings to be rearranged. People could drop. People could climb back in to the top 16 to qualify for the playoffs. This is a big night for a lot of reasons, Chad. Oh, yes. We have had the last, uh, you know, this is this has been what the talk of WCW has really been, is uh, this tournament. Uh, and throughout the this whole month, wrestlers have been trying to... Um, Earn some wins uh, to climb up the rankings, and tonight, as you said, is the last night to do that. The rankings will be set, and the top 16 from Nitro and the top 16 from Thunder will have a playoff bracket where the winners of both sides of the brackets will face off at this next pay-per-view. Determine who will earn their shot at the World Championship at Starcade. That is massive. The number one seeds going into tonight for each brand. It is a little tainted for the Thunder side as there was a buy or go bye bye match, which Juventud Guerrero yes. won. Uh, he is the yes. automatic one seed going into the Thunder side. So there is no 16 seed on the Thunder side. There's only 15 because Hoovy automatically would have beaten the 16 seed. But on the other side, going into tonight, Bill Goldberg at a 7-0 record right now with wins over guys like Terry Funk, Nick Dinsmore, and Dragon Kid <laughs> is, is yeah. your number one guy on uh, WCW yes. Night Show. Will that stage the same tonight? Or will the number two guy on Night Show, Perry Saturn, at 8-0-1 with that one draw, will he sneak his way to the number one seed? We will find out later tonight whose dreams will be shattered and whose dreams will come true tonight chad it's either you either finish your story yourself or you let someone else finish it for you and that all comes down tonight here at halloween exactly. havoc that's yeah, right some people are hoping for treats but some might get tricked um over you want to go over the last few halloween havocs just a very 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 yeah, I'd love to. uh in 1999 chad we saw rob van dam defeat big poppy chavo regal and Brighton. Uh, defeating TCP, heading over Savage, the Hardy Boys, over Sharkboy and Faces of Fear. Sting retains the U.S. title over Dean Malenko, Chris Jericho, Taz, uh, Bret Hart, Benoit, Nash, Scott Hall. Holy fuck, there are a lot of matches here tonight. The Flock with Mike Awesome. Shout out Mike Awesome. Uh, defeats Gold... Mike? Perry Saturn's got a win over Goldberg? I guess so. Uh-oh. Oh, my God. He got, uh -oh. he got a fucking 55 in that match. Oh, Jesus Christ. Chef over Ric Flair and Raven over Mick Foley. Um, two years ago, 2000 or three years ago, we saw Chris Daniels open the show. Or no, Goldberg open the show, defeating Mick D. Malenko. Wow. Daniels over Bailey Kidman, Samoa Joe over it. That was the World Heavyweight Championship match which opened the show. Yes, sir. No promo, nothing. China over Ric Flair. Regal over Lodi. Debbie over Cutie. Suzuki. Mick Foley over Bubba Ray Dudley. Scott Steiner over Kevin Nash. Sting and DDP over Ray and Rob Van Dam. Brett Owen over Team Canada, which was Eric Young and Bobby Roode. Scott Hall over Stardust of Dustin Rhodes. And Hoovitude over Chef Psychosis was your main event of Halloween Havoc 2000, 2001 in Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. Hoovitude opens the show this year, defeating Great Sasuke. Chris Harris was a part of the T uh, the NXT run. He got the big win over Chuck Palumbo, Mike Sanders, Carly Colon, and Charlie Haas. Mortis and Abyss defeating the Hardys. 
Minoru Suzuki over Shane Douglas. The Dudley Boys defeated Ahmed and Monty Brown. Debbie Malenko over Takako. You knew Benoit over Regal. Stardust over Eric. Stardust? I did not realize Stardust was around for that long. Stardust over Eric Young. Ray over Styles. Sting, RVD, and Bret Hart defeat the Click. And Goldberg, Jericho was your main. And last year, a massive, your best one yet, a 95 in the St. Pete's Time Forum in St. Petersburg, Florida. We saw CM Punk defeat Raven to open the show. TJ Wilson defeated Kevin Steen. Taz over Matt Hardy of a countout. Giant Singh over Matt Seidel. What a match that was, baby. Maya Nomi Toyota over Trish Stratus to become the WCW Women's Championship. The million dollar title. What a title that was. Sting defeated Taka Michinoku. Dave Batista and Chuck Palumbo over the Wicked. The Hearts over the world's greatest tag team. Minoru Suzuki over Bobby Roode. RVD Canyon, Big Daddy V, Shamrock for the U.S. belt. Rock in a five way to retain the Universal Championship. The Colmain, Shaquille O'Neal's debut match, taking on the big show. And the main event was Shawn Michaels, Shane Helms. Shane Helms, the Hurricane, he's got a lot of work to do to stay in the top 16 tonight. Um, as he Going into tonight is the 10 seed. Well, he's above, this is crazy, Shawn Michaels. He's above Shawn Michaels, who is the 12 seed going into tonight. And we go into the show, Chad. Let's get into it. Yes, let's jump right in. We have the opening video package for Halloween Havoc as Kryptonite by Three Doors Down plays in the background, the official... Theme song you of 2003, Halloween Havoc. Exactly. As soon as it says, oh, will you still call me Superman? It pins to the rock. It pins to the rock. It flashes to, like, the rock. Yes, I, of course, the rock is on a big ego trip right now. As he has been trying to prove that he and his Samoan family, uh, but mainly him, are the people's family. Because the rock is the people's champion. And, uh, and, and he always does what the people want. Then that's why he had his family, which was uh, Ekmo Fatu, which he now named Umaga, uh, as he rechristened him Umaga. Um, and Meg and the Barbarian have been beating down and trying to take out Rikishi in the weeks leading up to this. But while this has been going on, Brett the Hitman Hart has not only won, as you remember, he won a number one contenders match um, against The Rock. Um, and even though he, uh, you know, he has come up, he, he came up short. He has been requesting a rematch because The Rock cheated to beat him, and so that has been the story of this. We have a three-way match tonight: Rock versus Rikishi versus Bret Hart. We have Abyss, who has been waiting months to get his hands on Rob Van Dam. Abyss has never lost to Rob Van Dam in a singles match. However, uh, have, the belt have, is have they ever fought in a singles match? They have. I looked it up. Okay, they they wrestled. They wrestled in a singles match twice, and Abyss has beaten them both times. All I thought was, oh yeah, Abyss has won both times. Oh, RVD. Yeah. All I thought was it would be hard to beat one guy in a singles match if they've never had one. That's that's, <laughs> that's oh, they, I had to think about they it. One on, they wrestled one on one twice, and Abyss has beaten him both times. But yes, tonight the belt is on the line. And Rob Van Dam has not had the Paul Heyman guys in his corner um, in any of those matches. So tonight, Abyss may, if will history repeat itself, will Abyss win the World Heavyweight Championship or will Rob Van Dam finally get his win against Abyss and retain the belt? Shawn Michaels has been saying that Bill Goldberg has had a cakewalk um, in the months, in the weeks leading up to this tournament and says that he is a paper number one seed and has called Goldberg a sham and you haven't beaten anyone of value. So uh, last week, Go Bill Goldberg defeated Kendo Cashin, um, Shawn Michaels' protege, and then challenged Shawn Michaels to the pay-per-view. He says, Shawn Michaels, you're next. A thing that we haven't heard Goldberg say in a long time, and the fans popped. Goldberg versus Shawn Michaels tonight. And Perry Saturn, who is representing the entire, uh, for the entire, um, Quest uh, to get the number one seeding here in this video package because I didn't have enough people to do it. Perry Saturn, he has been on a roll for this tournament. He has had some big wins and has found himself in the second seeding. He has a six-man tag team match tonight. Will a, win, will a win and a Goldberg loss solidify the number one seed? We will have to wait and see. We've got a big night with championship implications on the line, Justin, at Halloween Havoc. Uh, yeah. 
I think a win uh, would put Perry Saturn over Goldberg. Or if Goldberg lost and Perry Saturn won, that would put Perry Saturn at the number one spot. He would be the, one of the few undefeated guys going in to the playoffs. So it's hard to uh, hard to say if Perry Saturn, one of the workhorses, the man who has worked the most matches since the playoff has started. Let's let's not fault anyone on this. Workhorse. This is his ninth match going uh, for tonight. No one has worked more matches in the last two months of the playoffs than Perry Saturn, and he is undefeated. One draw, one draw. We'll have to... It's a, so, eh. so he's not really undefeated, but... You he's know? never been pinned or submitted. He's never lost, but he hasn't won everything, you know? That's what he's going in to tonight. A lot of a lot of implications on the rankings going into tonight uh, are on the line tonight. And let's start with the opening match, Chad. Oh, boy, here we go. Yes, here we are. Paul Heyman has continued his quest to make the Paul Heyman guys the most uh, successful wrestling stable in the world because Paul Heyman wants to prove that he is the best manager of all time and everybody he, t- everybody he works with finds success. And Suzuki and Masahiro Chono won a number one contenders match for the tag team championships. And tonight... They will take on the big guns. Now, Big Show got hurt in the weeks leading up to this match. Um, and is he back to being 100%? Or will the Paul Heyman guys um, capitalize on that in, uh, on that injury? We will have to see. But the big guns have their uh, arguably their toughest test yet as a tag team against the Paul Heyman guys, Justin. Yeah, I mean, this is a massive match, right? Suzuki and Shono against Billy Gunn and Big Show. Tag, tag team titles on the line. And this uh, this means a lot for all these guys because Chono right now is 13th in the rankings at a four and three record. The other three aren't even in the top 16 going into this. A, a win Bro. for anyone here gets b- gets them basically in the well, 16. And, and let's remember, like exactly that, like it, winning is one thing, but winning on pay per view means more. So these guys could push their Does push it? their way to the. T- t- <laughs> I mean that's that's what I that's what Shit. we stated at the uh, that's what we stated in the that's what I stated in the uh, in the last pay per view. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, well, <laughs> the banks the <laughs> the scientists behind the rankings did not get that memo. <laughs> they, uh, well, then never mind then. <laughs> the scientists only gave more rankings to main event pay per view wins. Um, ah, that's. I think that's what I said, actually. That uh, is, if if the scientists were, they were given two points or double wins, yes. technically, if they won the main event. Which is why it got, well, yeah. But uh, still, a win here could sneak so, well, any one of these guys into the into the into the sixteen. Very much so. You know, there some are, people lose because there are there are some people who are in this match in the in these tournaments or in, in these matches uh, to coming up tonight uh, who will fall out. Yeah, if they lose, yeah, they will fall out. Uh, but a big match here. Um, do you have anything in the next segment, or is it just a straight match? Uh, the next segment is Big Show and Billy Gunn's entrance. If okay. I, if I remember correctly. And I am. The champs are here with a 69. Well, it's the Big Guns. <sighs> These two coming down the ring. Big Show with his taped up shoulder. And Billy Gunn getting the crowd hyped up. I got the tag <laughs> team championships in hand. These two have, uh, you know, really, really been on a run. They won the Battle Bowl turn, uh, t- t- uh, tournament to win the Tag Team Championships. They Boom. lost the championships to the Paul Heyman guys, in the, uh, but then won it back quickly after. And ever since then, have been the team to beat in the Nitro Tag Team Division. But the rank- show's injury. The rankings don't say so, Chad, as there are multiple tag teams above them in the rankings. That's true. I just mean as far as uh, as far as being the champs. Oh, for sure. And this is a big task because Suzuki and Chono, uh, Suzuki may not be on a on a tear like uh, Chono. Uh, Chono, yeah, it's a big match for both of these guys. Trio champions. Can they become trio and tag champions? Let's find yes. out up next. Uh, next segment of the got? match. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to pull the curtain back a little bit? I forgot. Justin's already te- te- already uh, added up the results of this pay per view and knows who wins all of them. So yeah. uh, we gave... don't ask him. Instead, instead, I'll just talk about this match. All right. So obviously, this match, um, Billy started it. Um, 
because, of course, Big Show, he's injured. And even though he is the Big Show, he's got his size advantage. You know, he is not 100%. So he is, uh, but B Billy is starting us off. And, Justin, the entire story of this match is, will Billy be able to tag in Big Show before uh, he is defeated? Because Chono and Suzuki, uh, cat and mouse game, this poor man. I mean, every time Billy crawls his way to Big Show and gets within fingertips, Suzuki or Chono will pull him back, kick him in the back, beat him down, and tag the other one in. They are having their way with Billy here, but eventually, Billy is able to fight his way back in and tags in the Big Show. The Big Show comes in the ring, big pop from the crowd, does the hot tag. He punches Ma Masahiro Chono with his giant ass hand. Suzuki runs in, Big Show choke slams Minoru Suzuki. They go back and forth. The crowd is loving it. And right when it looked like Big Show was going to get the win, the ref counted one, two, three. Oh, actually, no. The fans were chanting one, two, three. But the ref was nowhere to be found, and that's because the ref was distracted as Paul Heyman at ringside had a steel chair in hand walking up the steps, distracting the referee. Big Show then stands up and says, what in the hell is going on? And then while uh, Suzuki is on the ground, Masahiro Chono bashes Big Show in the head with his own tag team championship belt. Uh, 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 and then Suzuki goes for the pin. Paul Heyman books it off the steps. The ref turns around. One, two, Billy breaks up the pin and everyone is going nuts. Billy will not let his friend Big Show down. As, as, as finally things start leveling up again, evening out again. Billy gets back into the, back to his side of the ring. He gets the tag in. He's in. Masahiro Chono is the legal man. They're going at it. They're going at it. There's a, there's a, they're, they're, they're doing dual punches and the crowd is, is cheering. Yeah! When Billy punches and boo when Chono punches. They're going back and they're going forth. Justin, at the end of the day, one tag team was able to get the win here. And as we move to the next segment, we will see which tag team that is. As in a superb match, following interference from Paul Heyman, because he came back in a second time with that bloody chair. The big guns have lost the tag team titles, and Masahiro Chono and Suzuki are the champs. What does that mean for the rankings? You have to assume that probably takes Big Show and Billy out of, uh, out of it. Uh, yeah, uh, well, they were already out of it. Uh, a loss like this is definitely uh, taking them out of it. It's uh, hard to say. It's, uh, it's, I'm in a weird spot of wanting to update the records while we go, but not wanting to spoil matches moving forward. Um, so I'm in a weird, a, a weird spot right now. We'll announce, we'll announce them all at the end of the day. <laughs> but it does do Chono good, who, who is N13th going into this so chono has definitely solidified his spot in this but does suzuki make it in that's the big question suzuki started off very slow uh he had a couple losses early to um abyss and foley he losses he has got a loss to the faces of fear um so not not a great not a great or maybe just faces i wrote down faces so i think he just lost a uh uh, tag match against the faces, but regardless, I don't think I booked him to lose. To make him regardless, victory. started off very. He had three losses before he got a win. So, is this enough to make it in? We'll find out uh, later tonight. As Justin, we move on to our next match. Now, if we remember correctly, after the women's war games match, Debbie Malenko and Beth Phoenix had an epic stare down. And in the weeks leading up to the pay per view, Debbie Malenko has challenged Beth Phoenix to a match. She challenged her officially on the Mean Girls Club talk show, which is, of course, hosted by Debbie Malenko and Trish Stratus. And in that match, you know, or in that little talk show segment, Beth, you know, accepted the, the challenge. And then. Trish Stratus slapped Beth Phoenix in the face and said, that's going to be just a, a, a preview of what my best friend's going to do to you at Halloween Havoc. And then, just when it looked like, you know, Debbie and Trish were going to beat the, we're going to beat up Beth Phoenix, the two-on-one, Tara runs down to the, runs in, and, you know, she basically tells everyone here, you know what, if Trish is going to be... In, in Debbie Malenko's corner. You know what, Beth? You've held this women's division down. You and I, we made history together. We were team, we were partners in war games. You're a Mrs. You're, 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 you're the first woman to win money in the bank. It'd be an, and, 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 and Debbie and Trish take nothing away from them. They, they are pioneers of this women's division, but Beth, 
so are you. And you know what? It would be my honor to be in your corner and make sure Trish doesn't ruin this match. And so, Justin, Debbie will have Trish in her corner, and Beth will have Tara in her corner. As we go tonight, one-on-one, -on -one, Debbie Malenko versus Beth Phoenix. You talk another storyline thread here. Um, Debbie Malenko has never lost to Beth Phoenix. No, just True. like just like RVD True. has never beaten this. Beth has never beaten Debbie. So, will this be the outlier tonight, or will Debbie Malenko prove why she is a, the 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 top dog of this women's division? Because I mean, I mean, you, you look at the, the 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 this women's division. I mean, it's been. I mean, Trish obviously. Uh, had a hell of a run, but so has Debbie, and anybody else who has been on the top of the women's division has left. So I mean, I feel like Debbie and Trish case uh, to be you know tied one one on top of this mountain. You might you might disagree, Justin. You may say Debbie Malenko sque squeaks it out just a little bit. I think that's a I fair think, argument. Yeah. <laughs> but let's get into it. Who do you got, Chad? Let's get into it. Uh, who do I got? Well, I know who wins, and so do you. So why don't we just tell everybody else? In a decent match, Beth Phoenix defeats Debbie Malenko with a Beth Valley driver. During the match, Trish Stratus accidentally hits Debbie Malenko. Oh, no! And Beth Phoenix makes defense number five of the WCW Women's Oh, Championship. no! That dumb, dumb... Oh, that dumb... That dumb Trish Stratus. How dare Bad, she? Trish Stratus, come on, man. All right, we move on, Chad. Oh, this now, 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 this match right here, this match has a lot of implications on the yes. Nitro side of the rankings. We can look oh, right I'm here. Your television sets, you are seeing correctly. We mentioned big uh, implications to the playoff, and you are looking up Perry Saturn, Low Shapes, A Train, and Quiz, and Kevin Steen. Because at 19 years old, Kevin Steen has been on a hell of a run since separating himself from the Buried. He has come to Nitro. And Justin, how many? Well, what's Kevin Steen's record uh, leading up to this month? Uh, to this, to this. Match? Kevin Steen right now is four and zero oh, alongside, or five and zero. Oh, sorry, alongside his teammates Test and or Quiz and the A Train, who are also four and zero. Oh. So a combined thirteen and zero oh on the side of Steen, Train, and Quiz. Chad, the rankings, yes. they are 5, 7, and 8, respectively, in the rankings. That's huge. And now uh, Perry Saturn, we, of course, is the number two seed. And uh, Pentagon and Octagon, while they have not had the most perfect bookings leading up here, they have been able to keep themselves hanging on in the, uh, in the, the playoff picture. Uh, that is true, Chad. Saturn right now is, we went by over this earlier, is the two seed right now. Uh, I uh, seven zero and one octagon right now and pentagon um, are at eleven and fifteen in the rankings. Pentagon five and two. He had and uh, octagon is four and two. Pentagon had one singles match uh, where he didn't have octagon with him, so that is why he's five and two and four spots ahead of octagon. So this match, a big match right here, a big win for pentagon and octagon can shoot them up the rankings. But a loss right here, that might take Pentagon or Octagon out of it uh, for sure. He and, might be, he might be Pentagon. And, and, and Pentagon and Steen and, and, and the Flex Express have a big opportunity to rise up the rankings to the top five um, uh, possibility. We'll, we'll have to find out in this match right here. Octagon's fucking future is on the line here. It's crazy, Justin. You know, Kevin Steen and A-Train were both in that storyline involving Buried and Homicide's, like, little group. And now they have the opportunity to punch their ticket to Starcade, like, if they, if they, if they, with a win here. Like, that's, that's, that's pretty, that's a good uh, turnaround for both of them, I'd say. For sure, for sure. This this is gonna be a big a big test. Uh, no pun intended no for pun all, intended. <laughs> all six of these men right here. Let's get into the match. Uh, Tony, who do you got? Uh, all six of these men wanted it badly, and you could see it in the match. But I think a lot of it came down to the nineteen year old, little inexperienced Kevin Steen. You know, he's not used to being in these big lights. Perry Saturn, while he has had an up-and-down relationship in WCW, you know, every time he starts to pick up speed, he gets in his way. He gets in his own way, whether it's drugs or not winning the big one. Um, you know, he, but, but he has at least knows what it takes 
to be in the, under the bright lights of a pay-per-view. And I think that's what this came down to tonight because in a decent match, Perry Saturn in low shapes defeated Kevin Steen and the Flex Express when Perry Saturn pinned Kevin Steen with a flying elbow drop. You got to give uh low sh- or you got to give Flex Express and Steen all the credit in the world. They have they have booked themselves into the tournament. Uh, I don't think uh, they would drop out of it being 4-1 and one and 5-1, and one respectively. They gave it a good run. Perry Satterman, former U.S. champion in the WWE, former uh, champion in the WCW as well. Uh, this is this is like his big break right here. He's going to be, I think he solidified the two seed. Unless Goldberg loses tonight, I think he'll probably be the two seed. Um, that's a massive, massive, massive break for him because in the tournament... He doesn't have to be on the same side as Goldberg. The only time he'll ever see Goldberg is into the finals. He doesn't have to run into him first round, second round, semifinals. He's got an he's, he's he's got the you, you don't want to see Goldberg ever, right? And him being on the other side of the bracket right now away from Goldberg is huge. It's all it's all going to matter who the 15 seed is and uh Octagon who was the 15 seed winning could elevate him. So <laughs> The possibility right now, Perry Saturn Octagon. You know that could be the possibility uh, of you what know goes what, on. And, and you know what, Perry Saturn and, and Octagon, they were star, st- planets and shapes, and were a trio and had a trios championship match uh, last month. So these these three men have some respect for each other. So that could be an interesting matchup, but only time will tell. Only time will tell. Will that be the possibility? It was going into the pay-per-view. It might It might still be after. We'll have to find out later tonight. We move on, Chad. Oh, hell yes, Sable. Yes, yes. Sting has been out with an injury, but that has not stopped the NWO as Hollywood Hogan, with his lethal weapon known as the Harris Twins, have been running wild on Thunder. Haas and Benjamin, who have had um, some success in this tournament in their own right, Justin. I think at one point, Charlie Haas was in the top five. Uh, Going into tonight, Charlie Haas... um... Charlie Haas was... Okay, not into tonight, but week two, Charlie Haas was... Your fourth place guy. He was three and out going into it, and then took a loss, dropped down to eight, and then took a little, uh, took a week off. Was at eleven going into the night. He is the fourteenth seed. He took another loss going in uh, at the go home, so he's barely hanging on. He needs this win more than anybody. And Shelton Benjamin isn't even in the top uh, sixteen right now. He's looking it out right now as. Um, with Thunder, as we went over, Hoovy has the bye, so there is no 16 seed in Thunder. So Shelton Benjamin would be that 16 seed. Um, him and AJ Styles are fighting for it right now. And um, look, to get in, it's win or get in for Shelton Benjamin and Charlie Haas here. You lose, you're out. Uh, and you're not tag team champion. So it's like... I was gonna say, but, it's a, but it's a little more than that too because as you just mentioned, Justin, it's win or get in, but it's win and you're the champions because the Harris Twins, you know, who have had the... who has had this tag team division and a bit of a chokehold, you know? Every time you think, oh, there's a new top... Oh, the Harris have, Twins have been in here and have... they've gotten one over on the World's Grace tag team. They've gotten one over on the Hearts. Um... <laughs> hey, this tag team, they are they, they they continue to impress, and tonight they defend those belts against the world's greatest tag team. Will they prove that name correct, or will they fall once again to the Ron and Don Harris twin uh, lethal weapon? I mean, Who the, know? The Who ha- can, who's to know? The Harris twins, man, they're old reliables. They, you know, they're not they're nothing flashy. Nothing spectacular, but they're down to earth and they're gritty and they get the job done. They've got wins over the exactly. Hearts. They got wins over the Hearts. They're, like, they're like they're like that blue collar tag, uh, tag team. I think they're not afraid to get their hands dirty. They're not gonna hit you with a they're not gonna hit you with a corkscrew outside. They're not gonna do a moonsault, but they'll kick some ass. Exactly. Uh, this is a big uh, big match though for House Benjamin. Titles on the line. Rankings for the world title are on the line. This is massive for them. Can they get the job done? And they wow, they do. They get the win, Charlie and Haas. They do. Charlie Haas submits Don Harris with the Haas of pain. Charlie Haas said, "This time's different. This time, the world's greatest tag team are locked in. We 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 we're just we 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 were kids, and now we're men." He said, "This time is different. This time, the world's greatest tag team will put ourselves back on the map, become tag team champions again, and we ain't never giving them up." And Justin. Charlie Haas has proven that correct, as they have 
picked up a win over the Harris Twins tonight. And uh, Charlie Haas is, we will definitely see Charlie Haas in the tournament. Will this be enough to get Shelton Benjamin in? Time will tell. Time will tell. What a big win for the world's greatest tag team. Time will tell for uh, uh, Shelton Benjamin. He is sitting at 3-1, and one, so it, is it enough? <laughs> you, see, you would think 3-1 and one would be good, but over 10 shows, only wrestling four times. You know, it's it, it might not be enough. It might be. You know, who, we'll, we'll find out I, later tonight. You look at a guy like the workhorse Perry Saturn hasn't missed a show. He's been there. He is in no matter what. I mean, he I would mean, have been in even if he lost tonight. Exactly. You got to look at a guy like Bret Hart, who's who's the workhorse on Thunder since this. He's this. He's we're walking into his eighth match right now. He's at six and one. Like guys who work a lot, they're gonna get in because you know you look at their record. I, I don't care if they're five and three. It's better than a three and one in my book because they're working more, brother. We move on though. Oh, no, no. uh, right. Chad, explain this. Everybody, the swinger era is upon us. As we, as of Taz, has left WCW. I almost thought he was coming to you, but he's not. So I'm afraid, I'm afraid to talk about this. Yeah, he's going to New Japan Pro Wrestling. Yeah, Taz uh, has signed with New Japan Pro Wrestling. Um, I think he's going to be an absolute force over there. Why I didn't go after him is beyond me. I don't know why. I think I was just a little frustrated with uh, him. Uh, he wanted a lot of money as well, and I just didn't have it in he the asked budget. For a lot of money. He has a lot. <laughs> asked for a lot of money, and that's what. Uh, uh, that's what. That, that's what kind of like took me out of it too. I said that's a lot of money. Uh, so he left the TV championship vacant. Yeah, he beat and so he beat had, Hogan and then left the belt. He just said, "I'm done, and brother." Left the belt. And uh, so we had a battle royal to determine the new TV champion. And Johnny Swinger, who has been on a run in his own right uh, in this tournament, uh, he has abandoned the name Scooter Hooter. He said, I'm done with that. I'm Johnny Damn Swinger. And ever since then, he has been on a run and he has picked up the TV championship. And in the weeks leading up to this, he's been having Swinger TV, which is his talk show, where he gets to talk to all his swingers and everyone loves it. And Chris Candido came out. And uh, basically told Johnny Swinger that he knows what it's what it, what it takes to be the TV champion, and he didn't have to win it in a fluke battle royal. And uh, Johnny Swinger said, "Listen, I'll take I'll challenge I'll put the belt on the line against you, Chris Candido. I'm not afraid." And Chris Candido he said, "Oh, I'll we'll we'll face off for that belt, but when I'm good and ready, if you are a fighting champion, I want you to I I, I, I want to see how you defend against my buddy Travis Tomko." And uh, so basically, Travis Tomko is just gonna give Chris Candido a. Uh, uh, a scouting mission here, unless Travis Tomko is able to get one over on Johnny Swinger, because while Johnny Swinger uh, was doing uh, Swinger TV, Travis Tomko was able to sneak up behind him and powerbomb him through his talk show set table. And uh, Johnny Swinger, in the weeks leading up, he has, has been talking about how Travis Tomko put him through a table. So tonight... A Halloween Havoc, he's going to put him through a table. Because tonight, it's Johnny Swinger versus Travis Tomko in a tables match for the television championship, Justin. Oh, uh, here we go. Johnny Swinger, yeah, you are right. He has been on a roll, and that has got him the uh, TV title. He is walking in tonight 4-0 uh, as your TV champion. He's, yeah. He, he has- kind of won the belt, and then he's been doing talk shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was on a heater and then won the belt and said, I'm not working anymore, brother. So I'm not in the cards. Uh, he's 4-0. He's the sixth seed right now. So he is – for uh, Thunder has got a lot of undefeated guys going into tonight. Uh, uh, Nitro did not really. Well, Nitro had a lot, but a lot of them lost tonight. Uh, Taz trained, Steen lost. So um, – this is a big win. Uh, our big match for Swinger to retain his belt. But it's against a guy who hasn't really worked at all these last two months. So it's not really a mega win for Swinger. You, if he wins tonight, you're not going to see him elevate himself to like the three seed or the four seed. Uh, because quality of opponents is a big uh, big thing here in the eyes of the science the scientist, the ranking guy, uh, a.k.a. me. And uh, Tomko, I don't think, has a win in years. So... <laughs> it's not going to be a big not a, win. Not a, I don't think he's got a win at all uh, so I mean if Tonko comes out of this TV champion I will fucking poop myself watch my language Justin sorry for swearing all right. Well, and about that had uh, awesome heat and was a terrific wrestling. Johnny Swinger defeats Travis Tomko in a tables match uh, and you put Travis Tomko through a table Chris Candido ran in and attacked Johnny Swinger but it didn't matter it didn't matter because the swinger era is upon us. 
and he put Travis Tomko through a table and makes defense number one of the WCW World Television Championship. And Johnny Swinger and Travis Tomko had pretty good chemistry. Yeah, I mean, Johnny Swinger 51, Travis Tomko 39. Yeah, that's that'll do it. Swinger will be 5-0 and going into the rankings. Is that good enough to elevate over uh, the f uh, into the top five? We will find out later tonight. Uh, but Johnny Swinger is still your TV champion. The, sw the Swinger party, brother. Mr. Pineapple himself. Let's go. Uh, we are here. Fit Finley. Oh, Canyon's back. Yeah, well, Canyon has been uh, has been Fit Finley's, you know, uh, manager, tag team partner, ally, friend. You know, he earned his respect when Fit Finley um, dove off a ladder to protect him in a, a, at Great American Bash when uh, Canyon was being attacked outside because he has was hurt, um, and uh, and it, it, that did cost Fit Finley the U.S. Championship. And ever since then, Fit Finley has been on a mission to get his hands on Raven and win back his belt. And tonight, he finally has the opportunity. Uh, Canyon, you know, we see him in the video package because Canyon told Fit Finley, listen, I have your back tonight. If you need it, I'll be there. And Fit Finley said, I appreciate that, Canyon, but you know what? I don't, listen, this is my fight. I'll be there by myself. All right, if, if Raven's a coward and he wants to bring some of the Paul Heyman guys and then it, it pans down to Fit Finley holding his shillelagh, he says, well, I've got some backup of my own. You wait here, and when I'm done, We'll celebrate with the U.S. Championship. We got Fit Finley versus Raven tonight for the U.S. Championship. Come on, Finley, baby. Come on, bring it home, bring it home, bring it home. Uh, this is a match between Raven, who is at the 14th, yeah, 14th ranked spot. He's 3-2-1. and one. Um, A loss here, I think, takes Raven out. Uh, not only out of the rankings for the world title, but out of being the, the champion. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll take it out of being the champion at the very least. So the, but Finley, Finley's got nothing to lose here because if he loses, he wasn't going to be in the rankings anyway. He's unranked right now. Uh, if he loses, he's still not going to be champion. So he has, even if he wins, I don't think that win gives him into the top 16 anyway. So I think the he's only thing he's... He's here to win the championship he's here and play to, spoiler. He's here to win the championship and play spoiler. That is 100% correct. Uh, can he do it or can Raven remain United States champion? I think I lost, Trad, because I hear him talking through my wall, but I do not hear him now. Are you good now? Uh, oh, I hear you. I hear you. Yes. Did I, did I cut out there? Yeah, I heard you through the wall, brother. Oh, okay. The wall! Well, uh, well, it doesn't matter because uh, Raven defeats Finley using underhanded tactics and makes defense number four of the United States heavyweight title. Ah, uh, what was his underhanded tactic, brother? Uh, he cheated. He kicked Finley in the balls and then grabbed him by the tights when he pinned him. Ah, uh, he grabbed him by the balls, did I hear? He kicked him in the balls. <laughs> oh, I like grabbed him his ball sack, brother. Grabbed his little fucking dingling. That's crazy, Finley. You can't let that happen to you. Uh, they don't click. Uh, probably because they were ball grabbing. That's. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I thought this was gonna do much better. Finley is in the ring and he's he's frustrated. He's 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 you know, he's, he's feeling the effects of a grueling match against Raven. And out comes Canyon, and he gets in the ring and he gives his friend a hug. And then he says, "It's okay. We'll get him next time." And F Finley says. You're right, we will. And, you know, Fit Finley, you know, he turns to the crowd. He, like, puts his arm up. He has the crowd, like, cheer him. And then while he's celebrating, Canyon attacks him from behind, beats him down, and he says, You loser! You loser! And he just keeps beating down Fit Finley, disgusted. Everyone's booing. What? How could he have done this? The whole reason why Canyon is even here standing right now and, and now even worse injured is because Fit Finley risked his life on a ladder and this is how he repays him. Uh, everyone's booing Chris Canyon who gives a sinister smile as we move on to our next segment. Yeah, I hate Canyon, brother. He's also a loser. What's he ever done, brother? What's he ever done? Uh, one, of the, one of the greatest U.S. champs of all time. Yeah, same with Finley, brother. Yeah, that's a that's a tough one. It's a tough one for sure. But uh, Kenya can rot now for that. I'm gonna be honest with you. He can he can rot now. Uh, Finley though, uh, Finley saw his U.S. titles dreams uh, broken. 
And he's now saw his world title ranking or his world title opportunity at Star Kid. His um, the, that's gone too. Finley is down bad. And his friendship with Canyon has been broken. Yeah, he's gonna hit the bar. I know. It. I've been there, brother. It gets better. Keep your head up, Finley. Keep your head up. We have here Michinoku makes his way down to the ring. His opponent tonight won a number one contenders match on the weeks leading up to this match. And uh, Michinoku, he is the cruiserweight champion, and he's also in his own right trying to earn more points to get himself in this playoff tournament. He's got a another, but he better keep focused because if he is not focused and if he lets himself think about the playoff bracket, he might cost him his cruiserweight championship because he is taking on this man who's making his way down to the ring right now. Um, it, it, which is crazy to even have this thought process for Takamichi Shinoku because if he's even looked at the rankings, he would have known he hasn't been in the top sixteen in the whole month, uh, and I don't think this win's going to help him either. Uh, just, it, I don't. His head's in the wrong spot. He thinks this win's gonna help. It wouldn't. It would not help. Uh, I think he's like two and four. You should, be, should be focusing on <laughs> retaining your championship. Yeah, retain your championship, not retain your fucking rank twenty five, brother. Um, yeah, he's uh, three and three, and I just in in on the way Thunder is. That's not good enough. You know, it's it's not. He was he was ranked eleven. Uh, a couple weeks ago, and then took a loss, and hasn't really sniffed the top sixteen uh, since then. So, um, yeah, Taka, just worry about the world title or the cruiserweight championship right now because this man uh, he's facing is on a heater. But you know, what does that mean? It's Joy Mercury. Joey Mercury is here tonight. He has earned the number one contenders uh, for the cruiserweight belt. He, as Justin mentioned, he has been on a heater. Uh, and can he continue that momentum tonight by picking up the Cruiserweight Championship? We got Minchinoku versus Joey Mercury next. Give me, uh, give me, oh man, I know the winner. I was about to spoil it. <laughs> and Justin, Minchinoku was not focused enough, or uh, whatever the case, Joey Mercury picks up the victory tonight and about to have good wrestling and decent reaction from the crowd. Joey Mercury wins the Cruiserweight title. It does. It gets an 85. It gets an 85. Taka uh, can carry anyone to a good match. Uh, oh, God. Sorry. I got really sick right there. Holy moly. Woly woly. Uh, big, a big win for Joey Mercury. Does that sneak him up um, to the top 16? I think, if I can remember right, he was only one in one. So he doesn't have the work rate. He doesn't have the quantity that the rankers were looking for, but a big win over Takamichi no can be increased the weight champion. Um, could do it. We'll have to see you later tonight in the uh, Sunday selection show. <laughs> I'm stealing all the March Madness gimmicks, brother. Oh, he, exactly this it. this match means a lot, though. <laughs> yes, Justin. Why don't you uh, Why don't you explain uh, why this means a lot as somebody who has the who has close connections with the scientist? Uh, keeping track of the points of this of the, of the playoff. Now this match is a massive tag match that you know you look at these guys you're like okay we we've seen Thunder the the rankings are all this uh, this is an opportunity these rankings are an opportunity for uh, lower carded guys to make their names in a, a, a style like this and these four men have taken. Taking that to heart because I think there's only two losses combined for all four of these men. I think going into this match, James Storm and Bobby Roode right now are the fourth and seventh ranked guys on Thunder. As James Storm is 5-0, and Bobby Roode is 4-0. and And Sima and Aguila right now are currently ranked 10-11. and As they are both 4-1. and Bobby Roode... You know, Bobby Roode's on a, on a roll right now. James Storm on a roll. Aguila and Sima got big wins over... This is a, this is why Taka's not in it. Sima and Aguila have beaten Taka Michinoku before. They they got a win over them. I'm trying to find Bobby Roode's name. It's not an alphabetical order in my fucking... In my notes, well, it should be. Uh, there it is. They got wins over Truth and Stairs. Or through Truth and Chairs, sorry. Oh, they actually beat him twice. <laughs> and the Faces of Fear. So they they got big wins. They they got quality. They got quantity right now. They're here. They're five and zero, four and zero respectively. Seaman Aguila 
a big win here that jumps them into top five territory. Uh, it's got a lot of a uh, lot of ramifications here tonight, Joe. Correct. Two of the top teams on Thunder. All four of these men want to have an opportunity at the world title. What will happen as we go to that match now? We've got James Storm and Bobby Roode taking on Sima and Aguila. And in a decent match, Bobby Roode and James Storm. Quick, uh, did they defeated the Quick City Kingpins in 15-12 when James Storm pinned Aguila with an eight-second ride. Oh, shit, they got my sex life in a finishing move, brother. Holy moly, the eight-second ride. Uh, that Does that kill Sima and Aguila? Possibly. Um, they are f far enough down to... Uh, take a, uh, a loss might kill him out of here, but that elevates Rude and Storm to possibility top five status. You know, um, the number two seed Bret Hart has a match tonight. So if I mean if Bret loses, James Storm might be the two seed going into this. He might have the biggest spot in this uh, in this bracket because you, being the two seed is massive. Uh, you don't have to, you don't, again, it's the same thing as on the other side. You don't have to be on the same side of the bracket as the number one guy. So in this case, James Storm wouldn't have to face off with Juventud Guerrero until the end. So that, that, that's, that's massive. That is massive for James Storm and Bobby Roode. Um, yeah, that's it. Sima got an 82. Is that an 82? That's an 82. Holy shit. Sima was, Sima was cooking tonight. Sima was cooking. Justin, we have here the big uh, we have the big four way as this is being dubbed as we have four of the uh, you know four of the top faces on Thunder. We've got Matt Hardy, multiple time tag team champion, former cruiserweight champion. We have the great Sasuke who has been who's been has been putting on bangers, feuding with Taka Michinoku in the last few weeks. We've got of course the former Universal Champion, one of the greatest Cruiserweight Champions of all time. We've got AJ Styles and, oh, I mean, former TV Champion in his own right, too, AJ Styles. And we've got CM Punk. Former, the man former the World Rock. Champion is AJ Styles. Former, that's what I said, yeah. Former Universal Champion, former oh, TV the, Champion, all Cruiserweight all Champion. My bad. I all, I, all I heard was TV oh, Champion. Good. My bad. I'm sorry. Oh, you're good. I'm sorry. Oh, you're good. But... But has, you know, has, has had a bit of a, you know, he's struggled since winning his universal belt. That's always been a talk with AJ Styles. But then we have also the fourth man, CM Punk, the former TV champion and a man who took the rock to his limits. All four of these men want to pick up a win here tonight and solidify themselves. AJ Styles looking to get in the bracket. He's had uh, some struggles um, in the weeks leading up. He, and, and you talk about a guy who's been wrestling. AJ has been wrestling and he's been wrestling top uh, opponents. He just hasn't been winning. That is correct. AJ Styles has matches. Uh, he's got a one-on-one -on -one win during this uh, ranking period over Bret Hart. That alone should get him in the top ranking. But he's got losses to, like, uh, who does that? What did that fucking write? I don't even know what I wrote there, Chad. I don't even know what I wrote. But he's got losses where he shouldn't have lost. He lost like a three-way a couple weeks ago. Um, he lost... What did he just lose? He lost a go-home, right? I misclicked the main event. <laughs> Chad misclicked and cost... Um, yeah, he lost... <laughs> Taka and the Harris Twins defeated Matt Hardy, AJ Styles, and Charlie Haas. Um, <laughs> not a good... That's That almost killed AJ Styles' ranking. Uh, he's three oh, and our TV deal too. Yeah, three and three. Uh, he needs this to win um, because Sasuke is also right there. Sasuke three and one is the 15 seed, so it's do or die for AJ Styles and Great Sasuke. Matt Hardy has had a, a horrendous ranking period. He's not even close to being being in it and in consideration. So Styles and Sasuke need this. If they don't win, they're out. Punk's in it regardless. Doesn't matter for Punk. B bragging rights and, you know, superiority is a lot in AJ P or CM Punk's mind. He doesn't want to ever lose. So this match means a lot. And Matt Hardy's just there to fucking ruin someone's day. So who wins? I don't know. It's got a lot of... Matt Hardy's, trying to, Matt Hardy's trying to gain honor back into the Hardy name. In terms of the rankings, I think this match means the most of all the matches tonight. Probably. I agree. So who do you got in this match, Chad? Well, I got the winner. 
Who in about that had great wrestling and good heat. CM Punk defeats AJ Styles, Great Sasuke, and Matt Hardy when CM Punk tapped out AJ with an arm triangle choke. It's that's a tough loss for AJ Styles, who had maybe his best night of all time, a 93 in ring. He was cooking on all cylinders. But that's it. He is out of the he's not going to be in the playoffs. A guy like Charlie Haas will be, but AJ Styles will not be. A guy like TJ Wilson, who's not on the card tonight, will be, but AJ Styles will not be. And Sasuke gave it all he gave it his all as well. Didn't even take the loss here. Um he's out as well. As this counts as a loss for Sasuke. Uh, and that's going to kill him as well. So a tough break for Sasuke, um, an even tougher break for AJ Styles. CM Punk will go into the world finals or the world rankings at a 6-1 and one record, a massive, massive record, one of the best uh, on the Thunder side. Yes, as we um, keep on keeping on here, we got... Oh, you talk about big implications. Ray and Foley are going one on one tonight. Uh, this is maybe the, the second biggest. This is obviously the I think the biggest implication in terms of ranking on the Nitro side is both of these men have been really fighting alongside each other over the last eight weeks, nine weeks. They're both four and zero going into the night. One of these men will be five and zero. One of these men will be four and one and will drop down out of the top five. Uh, it'll be Foley, who's the third rank. Ray Mysterio as the fourth rank guy. 4 0, 4 0. Winner will probably solidify the three seed, I think I would, I'm would. i safe to say, with uh, unless Goldberg loses um, tonight. But, Chad, who do you got? Well, I, uh, I've got a surprise for y'all because this match, uh, as we go to it, uh, was very competitive. Both these two men wanted it badly, and it's not really a surprise. Um, I just didn't know how to transition into the, the match. Gets a 99 and an exceptional match. Rey Mysterio defeats Mick Foley in 1959 with a springboard hurricanrana. I mean, yeah, it's Rey and Mick Foley, brother. It's one of the, the two of the best to do it right now. Mick Foley uh, turned his papers in. He didn't want to be a GM anymore. He wanted to be back in the ring. And we just, we didn't have that room for him in WWF. And he comes over WCW making it, uh, he's doing it. He's going all out. He's not, he's not leaving anything behind right now in a massive match with Rey Mysterio, 20 minutes. But Rey gets the better of him. The younger, springier, uh, high-flying Rey Mysterio gets the job done over Mick Foley. And that will solidify himself as the three seed, possible two seed. If Goldberg loses, I'm going to say if Goldberg loses, Goldberg still beats Ray in the rankings. But what do I know? What do I know? The, the scientists know a lot of stuff. But Ray Mysterio, top three. Yeah, big win for Ray Mysterio. Hell of a showing for for McFoley though. Yeah. As we have our first uh, world title match tonight, the the world heavyweight champion Rob Van Dam the defends his belt against Abyss. Will Abyss finally get? his uh, world championship, or will Rob Van Dam finally get his win over Abyss? Uh, uh, cool. Abyss wanted this... Oh, by the way, one of the things I forgot to mention, uh, this match and the weeks leading up to it, uh, due to how physical it's been, due to how, uh, how violent it's been, this match will be a last man standing match. Oh. Oh. Oh, shit. All right. All right. All right, here we go. Who do you got? Well, I'll tell you what, this match was very physical, very violent. Uh, weapons were everywhere. Both men bled. Um, and, you know, uh, halfway through the match, right when it looked like RVD was going to um, end Abyss's career, Abyss's head was, like, wedged in between uh, the uh, the ring steps, and it looked like Rob Van Dam was coming to drop kick the ring steps and crush Abyss's head. While that was happening, Milmware, Tez, and Relic, the Wicked, came in, um, and th th they th got involved and were able to save Abyss in that uh, in, in that moment. But uh, quickly uh, later on in that uh, the numbers game, it was too much because even though Mills and Relic protected Abyss there. Um, the Paul Heyman guys uh, came out in full force. Uh, Big Daddy V, Minoru Suzuki, Masahiro Chono, Raven, all out with weapons, um, and they just flat out destroyed Abyss, to be honest with you. Um, 
And it wasn't just Abyss taking on Rob Van Dam. It was Abyss wrestling the entire Paul Heyman uh, guys faction. And the numbers game was just too much as Abyss, buried in weapons, did not answer the 10 count. As Rob Van Dam, Justin, retains his World Heavyweight Championship. Unbelievable. Sorry I didn't hit next segment on that. My bad. Oh, you're good. No worries. Yeah, RVD, still your world champion. Abyss, only 77, lackluster. Last, 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 doesn't matter. All right, let's move on. <laughs> As the Paul Heyman guys stand tall, Justin, are they the best stable of all time? Who, who's no. to say? No. Uh, Paul Heyman says yes, though. Yeah, I know he would, but um, why would they be? Let's be fair. Let's. Why would they be? I mean, Achono. Suzuki and Big Daddy V lost the belts and then won the belts and then lost the belts and then won the belts or something like that. Uh, oh. Raven's been flip floppy in the group the whole time. Um, come on, Big Daddy V lost to fucking Finley or something like that. I, no, come on, come on now, Chad. Come on now. The best group of all time oh, is the stick, the sick boys of Scott Stud. <laughs> True. And As we move on to the next segment, we've got Shawn co-main? Michaels versus Bill Goldberg as the co-main event. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, this <laughs> it weirdly got some. Uh, I, I mean, Shawn Michaels would love to elevate himself in the rankings. Um, Goldberg, I. I if Goldberg's one loss is over Shawn Michaels, I think he's going to be the one seed regardless, um, even over a somewhat undefeated Perry Saturn. I just don't see how Goldberg, his one loss to Shawn... I mean, you could say, well, Bill Goldberg's only wins are against guys like me and you. Well, that's fair. All right? That is fair. All right? That's fair. Um, but he still win. You still got to go out there and win. So, I don't know. Shawn Mike- he's still a professional win. Shawn Michaels winning here over Goldberg, though, will elevate Shawn Michaels to the stratosphere. Uh, could make this break. Could make this kid, you know, this young up and coming nobody, you know, who knows who Shawn, what is this kid? No one knows who Shawn Michaels is. The heartbreak could kid. Make his could make his career. He goes one on one with Goldberg right here, Chad. Who do you got? Um, well, as we <laughs> move on to the match, you will see the co-main event, uh, an unbelievable match. Bill Goldberg defeats Shawn Michaels in 1443 with a spear. Ain't nobody beating Goldberg, brother. He refuses the job. He just won't do it. So Bill Goldberg Bill Goldberg probably locks up the number one seed there. That wasn't uh, a, already that had it. Wasn't, yeah. 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 Goldberg will probably lock up the one seed. And I think that's the last Nitro match. So the Nitro side is... Is is finalized now. We'll go over it after yes. the main event. Of- yes. well, yeah, after the main event, we'll. Uh, I'll, I mean, we can go over. We can go over the Nitro side now if you want. Right, Maybe Goldberg stands go out as on the Titan Tron as they release the rankings. So here we go. The rankings for the Nitro side and who they'll face off at. Goldberg, the number one seed, will take on the 16 seed, sneaking in. With a big win, new tag team champion Minoru Suzuki will sneak in and be the 16th seed. Will take on Bill Goldberg first round. That's a Goldberg and Suzuki have a bitter rivalry in WCW. I mean, Bill Goldberg was taken out of Money in the Bank because of Minoru Suzuki way back in the day. These two despise each other. And for them to get first round draw is unbelievable. The winner of that match will take on the eight nine seed matchup, which right now. Will be the eight seed A train taking on the nine seed, the new tag team champion Masahiro Chono. So the possibility of Chono Suzuki being the second round uh, raises a lot of eyebrows and and, and lips are salivating uh, that kind of a matchup. Or it could just be Goldberg A train first round or next round. Goldberg Chono could be Suzuki would be train. A, would be a heavy hitting match. All right. Uh, let me go to the actual bracket so I don't fuck anything up. The under that on the this is the left side of the bracket. The five seed, Kevin Steen, at five and one, a tough break right here because he worked his heart off. Five and one, Chad. Five seed, he gets the twelve seed of Shawn Michaels, who just coming off a loss of Bill Goldberg. Probably the roughest draw for anyone. First round, Kevin Steen, Shawn Michaels, first round. Um, that's a make or break match for uh, Kevin Steen. I can make his career. I can really make his career. A big win over Shawn Michaels. The winner of that match will take on the four and thirteen seed winner. 
The four seed being Mick Foley, who lost a tough match to Rey Mysterio earlier today against the 13 seed, the U.S. champion, Raven. That's That side of the bracket is fucked. That's yeah. so fucked. Goldberg, Suzuki, Chono, Shawn Michaels, Mick Foley, Raven. Only one of those guys can make it to the finals of the Nitro bracket. That's that's tough. Sorry, A Train. Sorry, Kevin Seen. You got you got scammed right there. You got scammed for real. On the other side of the bracket, the two seed Perry Saturn will take on the fifteen seed, the two and zero Ken Shamrock. Uh, tough break for Perry Saturn. I think Shamrock's on a roll right now. He's only wrestled twice, but he has looked very good. Uh, that's a big test for Perry Saturn. Uh, the winner of that match will take on the seven or ten seed, which would be uh, test. Test is your seven seed, or quiz, sorry. Uh, the 10 seed is the Hurricane. So Test and the Hurricane will be first round. The 3 and 14 seed go one-on-one -on -one with each other. It's Rey Mysterio against a man who snuck in Octagon. Octagon stays in, sneaks in. He will be the 14 seed. Rey and Octagon could go off. Yeah, I mean, that could be a great match. And the winner of that match, the Ray and Octagon match, will take on the winner of the 6 and 11 seed match. The final two members of the Nitro side, Abyss, who lost to RVD earlier today, but stays at the 6 seed at 4, 1, and 1, will take on the 11 seed, Pentagon, who stays at 6 and 2. So we could possibly see Pentagon Octagon second round, a matchup everyone wants to see. <laughs> that would be a battle of, a battle of the shapes. Uh, make your predictions down below if you've made it this far in the video. I know you have. Uh, dude, that's a tough side. I don't know who the hell is going to come out on the left side. Uh, who beats Goldberg is the real question. I'm going to take Goldberg all the way to the finals. And I'm going to take, actually, Perry Saturn. I'd like to see Perry Shat. Mm, never mind. I take it back. I want Ken Shamrock. Give me Goldberg Shamrock finals. Give me the under. It's not really an underdog if you're the 15 seed and you're Ken Shamrock, but... You know, what do I know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was going to say, oh, catch Shamrock, what an underdog. <laughs> we'll find out the Nitro side after this match because you got one guy who, oh, only a 67. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Um, it's the world title on the line. It's the Universal Championship on the line. Chad went over it earlier. Um, Chad, talk about it again. Yes, of course. The, the people's champion, the rock, the face of Thunder, and then, you know, someone said, someone called him the face of Thunder in an interview, and The Rock corrected him and said, uh, correction, I'm the face of WCW. Um, and then the next week, someone said, we're here with the face of WCW, and he said, uh, correction, I'm the face of professional wrestling. Uh, he's the people's champ, and uh, like I said, he's been giving his family a task to take out uh, Rikishi, because Rikishi, in Rock's eyes, is not worthy of being a part of the people's family. And so... That's 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 been the story of that. Rikishi is trying to get his hands on the Rock, and he's been going through Mang Barbarian and Umaga to do it. And Bret Hart has been trying to, you know, Bret Hart is a no nonsense individual. You know, he's he's just trying to get a one on one match with the Rock, and he's in a three way. So you can see how well that's been working out for him. Uh, he had he did tell Rikishi, uh, you know, because Rikishi saved Bret Hart from a beatdown, so Bret Hart came and saved Rikishi from a beatdown. Uh, Brett's like, listen, I, I I feel for you, but at the end of the day, I'm gonna beat you to take to take this world championship if you get in my way. Um, so yeah, all three of these men vying for the universal championship, who the people's championship, as Rock calls it. We got a three way: Rock, Rikishi, Brett Hart, three former world champions, one current one, all squaring off tonight. Dustin, oh the Rock. All yes. Or will the people's champ Wait, retain? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't hear the ending part. I just heard, will the rock, and I said yes. I got rock. Well, I said, will the rock fall or will the people's champ retain? <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see, Trent. Uh, next yes, segment, we'll please. We'll see. Uh, ooh, that's a bummer. I got a 78. I think Brett just went got hurt if I read that correctly. That is a bummer. That's a bullshit. It's such a bullshit one, too, and you're going to be you're gonna be angry about it. Oh, it makes... It makes it now. I'm gonna run with it too. Okay. Uh, yeah. Rock submitted Rikishi during the match. Umaga ran in and attacked Rikishi. Rock makes defense number twelve of the Universal Title. Um. So maybe maybe Chavo Guerrero took it too far. Maybe Teddy Hart actually got injured because Bret Hart sustained a family death. 
Oh, no. And it really affected Bret Hart mentally. He was just not there. And tonight, it it you could really see, like, he was just not focused tonight. It was... Bret Hart's a professional. You know, he's a man that loves the wrestling business. So he was going to go out there regardless. But... He got he got news that someone in his family passed away right before he went through the gorilla, and that, it affected him tonight, Chad. Jeez, <laughs> that's that's all that's, right. That's, well, hey, hey, look. Sometimes it happens, brother. It's real sometimes life, it brother. Happens. Sometimes it happens. You got to work through it. Bret Hart, he tried. That's a tough chat. It's just so fucked. <laughs> All right, Chavo, well, we go on to the Chavo Guerrero one. killed Teddy Hart, and Bret Hart's like, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Teddy. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, yeah, so Bret Hart. Um, uh, yeah, Bret, Bret lost. So that will take Bret. Oh, yeah, thanks, Bobby Eaton. Rikishi. Oh, my God. Hmm. Rik- <laughs> thanks, Rikishi. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, Rikishi. I did it for the rock. <laughs> I did it for the people. <laughs> I did it for Chavo. Rikishi uh, has been uh, on the loose. He's a suspect for murdering Stu Hart backstage. <laughs> what the f- Come on, game. Oh, Rikishi botching an injury that killed Bret Hart's family member. Uh, was there a spot in the match where Bret Hart used like Rikishi dropped Bret Hart? Rikishi dropped Bret Hart on his head so hard mm. it killed his, it killed Stu Hart. Oh no, Stu Hart's gone. Uh, yeah, so the fucking fake bloodline wins. Uh, people's family retained. Ah, yes, yes, yes. So let's go over the Thunder bracket real quick while well, Chad's. Thinking about how to fucking fire Rikishi. Um, the number one seed, Hoovitude, will get a bye, so he makes it to the first round. He will take on the winner of TJ Wilson and York. That's a tough one because they're, they're friends. Oh, the tag Battle mates. of the Buried. Battle of the Buried right there. Uh, the 5 and 12 seed go one-on-one with each other as it's Bobby Roode standing at 5 seed at 5-0, and oh, taking on Scott Steiner. It was the 12 seed at three and one. The winner of that will take on the four and 13 seed. That is CM Punk at six and one, taking on Chad. He made it. Shelton Benjamin sneaks his way in as the 13 seed. He does draw CM remember, Punk. CM, CM Punk and the World's Grace Tag Team had been in pay per views together. Like that, the CM Punk and Shelton are friends. Yeah. Uh, well, that will be an emotional first round matchup for CM Punk. Is CM Punk a face or a heel? CM Punk is a face. Okay. Uh, on the other side of the bracket, the two seed James Storm with Bret Hart losing. James Storm moves to the two seed. Uh, without Hoovy getting a bye, James Storm would be your technical one seed. That is unreal to think about. James Storm, 6 0, will take on the 15 seed, dropping four spots. Aguila. The winner of that match. Good will- yeah, good for Aguila. The winner of that match will take on the winner of this match, Ace Steel, the seven seed. <laughs> this is a tough one for Ace Steel. <laughs> Ace Steel will take on the ten seed, Booker T. Oh no! Battle of the Eaton Empire. <laughs> it is unreal on the Thunder side how many matchups just are crazy because Chad Chad has no hand, zero hand on uh, on the rankings on how I ranked everyone. How this ended up is just strictly off a of win loss and who they lost to and where they lost them to. It is unreal that they steal Booker T at TJ York and TJ Wilson uh, ended up fighting each other. Uh, the three seed Bret Hart at six and two will take on the fourteen seed of Sema. That's a tough one for Sema. I don't even know if Bret Hart can go. He's hurt. <laughs> He's got a broken heart, brother. <laughs> You're so mad. I oh, yeah, your... Sorry, my, my my boss texted me. I was reading something. Can oh, you were you I supposed know? to go to work, brother? No, I wasn't. <laughs> oh, was he asking you to go to work? No, he wasn't. Oh, Bret Hart taken on Sema, uh, which can uh, what I said was Bret Hart was taken on Sema. Can he even go? He's hurt. He has a broken heart. Ah, uh, he's got a broken heart. <laughs> well, he better repair it quickly because Sema will take advantage of that. And the six seed Johnny Swinger. We'll take on the 11 seed Charlie Haas. The winner of that will take on Brett or Sema. 
So, uh, I mean, Swinger, TV champion, could walk into Bret Hart in round two, which is a tough, that's a tough look for Johnny Swinger. Uh, on the other, on the Thunder side, man, Hoovy, Hoovy, Rude, Scott, Punk. Man, that's a crazy lineup right there. I'm going to go CM Punk. I think, yo, something's coming to the Hoovy. So, Karma's coming to fight Hoovy. He's been, he's a son of a bitch. He's a son of a bitch, Hoovy. Uh, so he's going to take on CM Punk. I don't even, Hoovy's a face. What am I talking about, right? I was gonna say he he he. he, he Sorry, I'm not. Fought. I or bye bye match. I'm not used to faces getting a fucking buy in a tournament. You just don't really see that often. You see the evil heel getting one. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna give a. Oh God, I'm. I'm fuck that other side. Bret Hart. It'll probably be CM Punk, Bret, and Goldberg and Shamrock in the final four. But I'm probably wrong. I never know. Uh, give me your predictions down below, Chad. How, that was that's fun. I like that. It gave a lot of new life, a lot of a breath air for a lot of guys to make it into a, a, a tournament like this, who would usually never have an opportunity like yeah, a lot, this. A lot of fresh matchups, I think. Fresh matchups, uh, elevated statuses for guys like Steen. You're now seeing on the main show. Uh, a train quiz like the, the Johnny shades Johnny coming. Swinger won a title off of this like this yeah exactly it's only gonna get bigger it's only gonna get better you're gonna you booked a lot of these without really thinking about it I feel like with more time and thought next time next year there's gonna be a lot more uh, manipulation I feel like yeah, on your end I, it's gonna be yeah, more. Now that I know what to expect, I think I'll be. I think it'll be better next year. But I was, I was very happy with this. Yeah, it worked out for the best. This is a, this is gonna be crazy. It's a shame that it's gonna happen on TV where none of you guys are gonna see it. <laughs> 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 we'll go over it on uh, World. All right, whatever the next. It's not World War Three, is it? Uh, you, I think I'm. I think I'm still gonna. I think I'm gonna call it the World War Three playoff. That's what I think I'm going to call it. Uh, yeah. Well, World War Three playoff is going to be the next pay-per-view name. We'll see you then. Uh, Survivor Series also. Uh, it's probably going to take a back seat, it seems like, because this is major Starcade implications going on. Uh, and Survivor Series, for the first time ever, I think, doesn't have a 5-on-5 five -five Raw vs. SmackDown. So get fucked, Survivor Series. Uh, we'll see you uh, there. I'm sure it'll have a different kind of 5-on-5, five -five, probably, right? Oh, it does. It's got one. It's got one. Okay. I was going to say, not having one is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have one, but not having a Robert SmackDown one because we have a world championship. Uh, we need to figure out who's going to be the SmackDown world champion, and that will be crowned at Survivor Series. It is unfortunate that we are both running a tournament in our November pay-per-views. That is just kind of how it worked out this year. Uh Masawa leaving. Masawa left me with no choice. All right, not my fault, brother. He's over in New Japan now. We'll see you there. Well, no, we won't. Fuck you, Taz. <laughs>